Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa! It's April Fool's Day. I don't want no shenanigans. April. <laughs> I don't know how you do, Gil. Not me. I'm usually getting April Fool's. No, I can't repeat it because, you know, you got like no air. And we would like to Good. keep the show on the air. Good. The People's, the people's Podcast. This is Gil's Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. As always, we got the legend Gilbert Arenas here with us. What's happening? So, Gil styling, as usual, really upgraded the fit, guys. Nice. The oh. mesh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mesh? Yeah. It's yeah. Giving, giving Mexico. <laughs> it's giving Mexico at the beach? Yeah. <laughs> Villa. Gilberto. Villa it's giving, yeah. It's giving vacay vibes. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, it's a good thing. Okay. We got Lexi Brown yeah. back here with us with the. Pants, the pan game is phenomenal. Pan Thank game you. phenomenal. Show them off. Where, where you get those at? Um, my homeboy, his Instagram is shop us versus them, I'm pretty sure. I will tag him later today on my Instagram. Shop us. We need that Gil's Arena discount. Yeah. If you don't mind. We got the dream killer, Rashad McCants, back in the building. <laughs> What's up? We fit it. <laughs> the, mm -hmm. the workshop. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Got reinstated on the dating apps. <laughs> you back? I'm back. <laughs> back up. You waiting on the new name? On the new name? New name. What dating apps you new use? New pictures. <laughs> <laughs> new pictures. Can't, new can't pay me. I'm uh, back. <laughs> Wait, how many apps do you be on? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Farmers only? All of them. All Christian of them. Mingle? Coffee and bagels. All of them. Oh, wow. What is coffee and bagel? This is a new one. <laughs> go get Are those coffee, coffee dates? Go coffee yeah, dates. That's coffee cute. Or a bagel. Mm -hmm. That's very cute. Farmers, farmers dating, the farmers <laughs> dating app too. Oh, all of them. Farmers all only. Of. Farmers only. only. Yeah. People who farm? Yes. A little backyard garden. A backyard garden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a particular gardening tool. <laughs> You know, hey, hey. There's a, <laughs> so you're a crafty motherfucker. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, on it today. R Raya, Raya. I'm trying. They won't, that's the only one I'm not oh, on. Oh, they won't let you in there? Yeah, I had a conversation last night. I'm at Delilah. They're telling you, you ain't on Raya? I said, man, they won't let me in. Uh, I'm on the wait list for a year. They fight the good fight. How about gettothepoint.com? We just get right to the point. I'm trying to create that out. How much? You got everything. You, I mean, it's all the same thing, it right? Is. Getting to know each other. What happens to the people who just want to get to the point? Yeah. I mean, we can they call that. it. They used to call it back page. Yes. But, yeah. But, they got rid of it. Yeah, they, they got, got rid of it. it. Just yeah. make it classier. Get to the point. Hey, we, might, to the we point. might build Party that. after dark. We might build that out. <laughs> get to the point. Shit. Get to the point. <laughs> Ew. Straight Yo, you giving away billion dollar that. ideas for free. I'm just saying. Don't support that. Somebody in the chat start get to the point dot com. Cut us in. You heard it here first. Mm -hmm. It's on record. The diddler. <laughs> no diddy. <laughs> no diddy. <laughs> We're partying is extreme. <laughs> Here's what's cracking in the arena today. Uh, Wimby had the internet going nuts after tossing the game ball in the crowd after the best game of his rookie season, uh, while Jalen Brunson dropped a career high 61 points. But who really deserved that game ball? The rematch we've all been waiting for is finally here. Iowa, LSU, Angel Reese versus Kalen Clark. We prove you what is sure to be one of the biggest games in college basketball history. And LeBron delivered one of his best games of the season Sunday, but just how much does he have left in the tank? But before we get into all that, as always, this show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Do yourself a favor, download the Underdog Fantasy app, use promo code GILL, and they will give you a $100 deposit match for your first time deposit. We would really appreciate it if you supported this show. Kept us going, kept us churning. Shout out to Underdog Fantasy for paying all the bills here at Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Woof, woof. Uh, and as always, we do mostly fans at the end of every show. We drop a good question in the chat with your Underdog Fantasy username, and we use that question on the show. We will give you a $50 bonus to your Underdog Fantasy account if you send us a video at mostlyfansgill at gmail.com. Keep it under 30 seconds, and we use it on the show. We'll give you a $100 bonus to your Underdog Fantasy account. You cannot watch the show live with us on YouTube. we got audio versions available on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from. And as a reminder, we are going live, ladies and gentlemen. Gills Arena is hitting Hollywood Sunday, April 14th, the last day of the NBA regular season. We are doing a live show at the El Rey Theater in Hollywood. Do we have taken information yet for the people? Uh, we are working on it. We are working on it. We will have a black show. Yeah. We are. <laughs> last, minute, <laughs> last minute show. We'll give it to you on Thursday. When we feel like it. <laughs> Just show up uh, with some bread in hand, April 14th at the El Rey Theater. There will be a long line. We will have security, as we already mentioned. 
will be some snacks there, hopefully some beverage. Good times. The entire Gills Arena crew will be there, and we would love to have you there with us for the last day of the NBA season where we will celebrate the Lakers. Making the play. Getting the six seed. Oh. <laughs> getting the six seed. <laughs> play in. All right, let's get into it. So uh, last week we talked about uh, candied watermelon. Uh, this week we have a new challenger in the most unnecessary food category. So I introduce you to Kool-Aid wings. Uh, what? Kool-Aid wings. Oh, no. <laughs> Photos making around Ooh. on social media this weekend. Uh, three different Kool-Aid options. We have red, blue, orange. <laughs> I don't know what the dipping sauce is. Cherry. Was it cherry? What? Man, stop. Do we, do, yeah, do, I just call it red. Stop the man. Yeah, red, red Kool-Aid. Yeah. Red Kool-Aid, yeah, blue Kool-Aid. Kool oh, but it is cherry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. The, the flavor is the color. That's it. So are y'all rolling with Kool-Aid flavored? No way. What if Applebee's added it to the menu? <laughs> hey. 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 Mm. Or Cheesecake Factory, you rolling with it then? Applebee's no. or nothing. Applebee's or no I do like Cheesecake Factory, though. But I would not like them if they added that to their menu. Seems like an unnecessary item. Gil, are you rocking with Kool-Aid wings? No, I don't like, <clears throat> I don't like wet wings. You like dry joints? And they have to be dry, so, and I dip them into the sauce so I can keep my fingertips. Because then it becomes Ooh. a hassle. Too messy. Cherry yes. dip, I got to clean it to get the next one. I don't like my fingertips wet. That is chess, not checkers, ladies and so gentlemen. So I, get the, I can get the dip. So you dip it in the Kool-Aid sauce? Yeah. You would dip it in the Kool-Aid sauce? If it's, I mean, if it's, I mean, is it with honey mustard, barbecue, spicy, whatever. So I just have a whole bunch of sauces that I'd like to dip. I understand. So I'm plain or lemon pepper? Lemon pepper, fire. So you would try the Kool-Aid sauce? If it's cherry. That's disgusting. Maybe cherry barbecue, you ever taste cherry barbecue sauce? No. It snaps. Solid. Snaps. It snaps. But it's not cherry. It's, this is not cherry barbecue sauce. We don't know that. Kool-Aid. Kool oh, no. this is cherry <laughs> Kool-Aid. Kool Have you ever had Kool-Aid? I've had Kool-Aid. Yeah. This you go dip, so you dip your wings in the Kool-Aid? I mean, I've had food fall in the Kool-Aid before. Yeah, how's it ain't different? <laughs> like, like, like you're you drinking some Kool-Aid. Yeah, you know, hot dog and drink the Kool-Aid. I mean, oh. Not we got to see. Not the same, man. Not the same. <laughs> not the hot, same dog little hot dog with little orange juice. You got to wash it down. That's not the same. No, no, not the, the same. blue Kool-Aid? Mm -mm. the, the, the Something mm -mm. else. Blue raspberry Kool-Aid with the dipping sauce? Mm -hmm. What? No well, how's it different eating a wing with the Kool-Aid and taking a sip? Different. It is different. It's like, uh, what you call it, the, the dip stick, uh, the little shit we used to have when we was kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The little... Dip, 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 dip. That's the same shit. It was, it was crack for kids. Dipping in do we know where Atlanta? that was from? Was that also from Atlanta? I do not know, but I would have to take a, a good gander and guess that. Ugh, Atlanta, Atlanta, come on. Somewhere in that region. Somewhere in the yeah. south. Somewhere in that yeah, region. Yeah, somewhere where them yeah. niggas be at. <laughs> <laughs> Gold teeth, <laughs> silver front. It's embarrassing at this point. Please. <laughs> silver front, you know what I mean? Whole front gone. Enough is enough. It's illegal for white people to sell some shit like that. <laughs> Y'all will go to jail. Y'all sell some shit like that. Eat the wings, boy. <laughs> uh, all right, well, Let's keep it moving. Uh, former Michigan guard Xavier Simpson has been cooking in the G League with the Motor City Crews, embarrassing defenders with this signature move. So we got to take a look at the clip. Yeah, it, his slow steps. It was me. Freeze him. Oh, this is something he does often? Yeah, he does it. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. That is this embarrassing. This is my move. Oh, wow. Please. So he drives to the hoop full That's speed. Old school. Ah, old oh, school. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah he, he also he gained that. some notoriety. Oh, he hits that. Last season with his Oh, yeah, that was from last year. A okay. cream ass hook shot. I remember that. Yeah, with the, with the janky foot. That's tough. So, how tough is this move to pull off, and what would you call it? Wait, which one? The slow step the one? Slow step, yeah, the first one. Uh, okay, so there was a, a trainer by the name of Slow Mo. He used to, this is, we're talking about 98, 99. He used to train Kevin Gaines. Ooh, the legend. He used to train Kevin Gaines, and he created this move. I remember him coming into the gym and said, I got a new move called the Slow Mo. That's what his name was, the Slow Mo. Okay. Come in and. Boom. Like you run it real fast and then boom, just stop. Mm -hmm. And I remember Baron Davis, like the first one trying it. 
but never really did it in the NBA. So the first time I really seen it was like 98, 99. So to actual see it being used is like crazy. I seen Jamal Kevin Gaines, who also went to Michigan, played with Jamal, Jamal Crawford. Jamal did a little huh? bit of Jamal. Kevin Gaines played yeah, with Jamal yeah. Crawford in Michigan. It was that, it was that crew. LA, yeah, Michigan. it was that crew. Mm -hmm. I think he moved to Vegas, but he was a legend. It's like a little Man, Euro. I, was, I like it like a little, it's like a little, uh, bum. Ooh. Ah, got you. Ooh. But see, like, are, are, okay, so are you allowed to step down? Mm, if no. you step down, is One it One more a, step is a travel. One, one two, two is a travel. Okay. There's no gatherer zero steps or negative zeros or whatever. You know, all the other <laughs> shit y'all be doing. Third step is a travel. One, two, travel. Three. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I used to stop. That takes a lot of body control. Yeah. That's Very a, impressive. That's the difference. Very impressive. Very impressive. To slow all the way so, down. And yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. But how would you How would you try to guard that? You got to hit the ball out of his hand. Yeah. <laughs> just you just can't jump. Time. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, you just can't fly by him. But he got that hook shot too, so it's one or the other. <laughs> right, it's nice. I mean, I mean, he's, I mean, you know, when you when you small like that, you have to be as crafty as as as, as he is. So nice. You gotta have some craft in your game. Is he the he's the only one really pulling it off, right? Mm -hmm. That we've seen so Where's far. Where's he from? So he went to Michigan. Hold on. Man, Michigan too, huh? Yeah. Maybe. It's a Michigan thing. Shit, is it his son? Nah, no, just saying. Is that where he learned he played that? with Jordan Poole. Hmm? He played with Jordan Poole. Nah, I think he or he might have actually. He, yeah, he uh, yeah, he been he was in Michigan 2016 to 2020. So mm -hmm. he yeah. played with Jordan Poole. All right, most definitely. Well, That's shout cool. out Xavier Simpson. He's from Ohio originally. How he, tall is he? Uh, six feet. One ninety. Little crap. Six feet one ninety. You had to say his weight. <laughs> <laughs> Little we crafty figure, one. I know, we figure six foot it has to be anywhere from 160 to one. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, le little I'm crafty, letting you know. Little crafty, little okay. crafty. I like that. All right, well, let's uh, keep this moving. We had a bunch of great games on both sides of the NCAA tournament this weekend. Let's <laughs> start on the men's side. What? <laughs> someone, wrote, someone wrote Flint Water, and it just made me think that might be the reason he stopped. <laughs> <laughs> that bacteria got him. Stomach hurt. <laughs> stomach hurt. Ah. He did it on that once, and he's like, oh, this works. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> ah. Hell yeah. That nigga got to take a shit and <laughs> need a layup. Uh-huh. That Flint water got just <laughs> ass backwards out there. Got it. We the, can, chat, <laughs> the chat is hell. The chat, y'all going to hell for that one. There, there are a lot of people in the chat who are, are not going to see heaven. Uh, we would just say that. But let's talk about NCAA tournament. Uh, this week, I'm starting on the men's side. Let's start with uh, Zach Eady uh, on a legendary run this tournament. Sunday, he put up a career-high 40 points, go along with 16 rebounds, and Purdue's win over Tennessee. So Eady's averaging 30 points and 16.3 rebounds per game and is the fourth player in the past God 70 damn. years. In the tournament? In the NCAA Shit. tournament. Fourth player in the past 70 years to average at least 30 and 15 through his first four tournament games, joining Wilt, who literally is on every single list, known to man, uh, Jerry West, Elvin Hayes. So 7'4", 300 pounds. Edie's projected to be a lottery pick in this year's draft, but a lot of people think that he will struggle to make the transition to the league. So, Gil, I think you are one of those people. You rolling with Zach Edie? <coughs> <laughs> Listen, I <coughs> Listen, I don't want to, you know, mess a kid's hopes up, right? Because, you know, you know, he's playing hell of a basketball, but, you know, I'm pretty sure whoever drives him in the lottery is probably going to get fired within a few years after that draft pick. You know, the, the, how he plays the game is not how the game is being played today. So that same player you can find in the second round, so I'm pretty sure he will slip because how is he going to play defense in the NBA now? Right, you, you only really have two matchups, which is Joker, Embiid, and they're going to pull you on the outside. I mean, it's, it's, it's a different game. So unless he can develop a defensive strategy of moving around the perimeter, being switched on, he's just going to be picked on. So the waste of a lottery pick on that, I don't see it happening. But, you know, there's stupid general managers out there. So, you know, it could happen. I don't think Gil's giving the NBA too much credit and all the stupid-ass coaches. <laughs> <laughs> Even though the game has changed, the way he plays, he's Yao Ming. He's what Yao Ming would look like if he went to college, right? 
So Yao Ming transitioned. When he, when he did transition, it was a type of game where we wasn't pulling Yao Ming out to guard the threes and fours and switches and stuff like that, right? So the only thing Edie need to really be able to do is be able to say, okay, man, he gonna hit this shot on me every now and again. So if you're a guard and you get switched out on Edie, you gotta hit that shit. If not, nigga, it's a good switch. I'm gonna drive by, he's slow. I mean, you, you don't think he's still like an asset? And he's definitely an not asset. A a Pick and roll of- asset. You look at Rudy Gobert, you look at Joker, you look at all the other bigs that's out there. They ain't really that much faster than that nigga like that. You big, it's a big body. You need, can't teach height. Yeah. As a lottery. A lottery guy that you probably can't use is a waste of He's a lottery. the best college player out there. <clears throat> Facts. So you oh. got to pick. Seven, four, three, it don't even matter about like ability at this point. It's potential and who's the best on the board. Get the best nigga on the board. Especially if you need it. If you need size, you got to take him. Lexi, how do you think Zach Eady will translate? I mean, I haven't, I haven't watched him a ton, yeah. but you said he's 7'4"? Seven, 7'4", four? Seven, four, 300 pounds. Rudy's, a, Rudy's 210 pounds. I mean, he's not 300. Yeah. So. I mean, I just feel like you should give him the opportunity, the chance to be around other NBA players, see NBA coaches with development, depending on where he goes, because some teams have better development coaches than others. But I don't know how many teams are going to pass on 7'4", who's averaging 25 and 12 for the season. Like, that's very that's impressive at his size. I mean, he is big and slow, but there's a lot of big and slow people not putting up 25 and 12. And he goes to the boards. He gets the rebounds. He's got a nice little jump hook. He got a little game. It ain't Joker game, but he can get you. But in the number. right system, who knows what he could turn into? So people passing up. The ones that pass up on him might be the ones getting fired. Whoever picks him in a liar is going to get fired. <laughs> I think it depends on what team. He's going to be in switch. They're going to pick and roll him to death. He's going to be in every pick and roll scenario that's known to offense. That's like and he man. switches, take him off the dribble, well, take him off the dribble, take him off the dribble. You got a seven foot four dude sitting at the three point line getting taken off the dribble. There's nobody back there blocking shots. So uh, it's, it's like if Shaq played today, yeah, we, we, we see you on offense, but on defense, it's pick and roll, hoping you, you switch. You don't think that there's a defensive scheme that they could put together to prevent that from happening? In the zone, today's game, that's all they're doing is pick and roll. Well, and it wouldn't switch. even matter because we get what we want to get on the other end. Well, he not gonna play what? We get he what, play what we need. 10, 15 minutes a game. So, so why are you again? 10, 15 minutes a game. Why are you picking him in the lottery? Lottery is supposed to be your game changer. No, it's not. Not for every team. No, it's not. No, it's not. Not for every no, team. No, because well, you know what? Who you know who wasn't a game changer? Want to put some? Brandon Miller wasn't a game changer. Brandon Scoot Miller. Henderson wasn't a game changer. They thought he was. And they wasn't. They thought he was. He's 18. But they wasn't. He hasn't. He's 18. No, no, that's true. Matter. How old is this? How old is this EDK? 21. Okay, but look, it's not that much older, but look, regardless, regardless, when you pick a motherfucker that can give you some type of advantage, eighteen is different than twenty-one. But seven four is different from six two. <laughs> so you, you think he's gonna go lottery? You gonna put something on it? I know he'll go lottery. What would y'all put you on? You don't it? think he's gonna go lottery? I've talked to three general managers, but we I, that's, just that's, say I'm capping. Fourteen yeah, spots. Okay. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a friendly wager. Agreement. Hey, listen, higher Edie lower. don't go fucking lottery. Top four higher three. lower. They need to blow the, the whole damn organization up. What are you talking about? Edie, 40, <clears throat> 40 and 16? They think he's and don't let, I mean, And if they win, if they happen to win the national championship, he's definitely going lottery. They got him looking like Bobo, Bo, that he was projected as a top five pick and might slip into the second round. That's What, what was Bobo Bo picked at? Uh, second round. 46, yeah. but they had him as a... Who are you going to pick in front of Edie? That's the question. Same people they picked in front of Bobo. So Bobo, 44. 43 Who was people in Bobo's draft In 2019 class? draft. 43 people. It don't listening. matter. Oh, no, saying, who There's are my you 30. out of this, this class of people who How many people who are in playing? the first round? A bunch of 30? Eight, a bunch of 30 18. Picks? 30 picks in the first round. They're not... T- Lottery's top 14. I can't see 30 picks There's going by. There's not 13 better players than him. No, it's true. It ain't nothing about doing but better. Like, if I can't use you, I can't use you. You're going to use me. I'm 7'4", 300 pounds. All right. So let's talk about an interesting conversation I saw on social from my guy Nate Jones that you brought up as well. Yao Ming, not to compare them to apples to apples, but how would Yao Ming's game translate in this modern NBA? Very well. He can pass. He can shoot. He can shoot free throws. And he's fucking 7'7". Free seven, throws. Seven. 
<laughs> you can shoot free throws. You got to foul me or I'm dunking this bitch. Throw it up. Give it to me. Wimby, if Wimby was 300 pounds, what's the difference? Wimby had a handle, he could shoot it. 300 pounds, you can't move. I mean, the only team that can probably use him would probably be what? Grizzlies? Where is Grizzlies going to be a pick? Utah, Charlotte, Atlanta. They're moving too fast for him. Moving too fast. Do you they, think he can work on, you know, drop some weight and work on that foot? That's what he's going to have to do. Or they going to slow the game down for him. Slow it down. If y'all sorry already moving fast, what the fuck are, you, <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? Y'all moving fast, you suck. Slow the fucking game down so we can get this big Switch it up. Yeah, what the fuck you mean? What y'all are doing is clearly not working, so you might as well be open-minded to bringing in someone like him. And I understand what he's saying about certain guys saying, I will pass on them, but those are certain GMs. The other motherfuckers getting fought. Y'all dumb. What is y'all talking about? But Gil, you're saying if, if a GM takes Edie, they will not. I'm saying he's going to their job. That general manager would be fired because it's a safe pick. Whoever he is, whoever picks him will be a safe pick. Like when Shane Batty was coming out, there was a safe pick. Like, okay, he has the name accolades. I don't know who to draft right now, so I don't want to take a chance. I'm going to go with the safe pick. Right? So he's a safe pick. But in the lottery, if someone takes him eight and under, and now he's sitting at the age of 21. We're not talking about Scoot. Scoot is three years from being 21, right? We're talking about 21 right now. But by the time he's done with his rookie deal, he'll be 25, right? So that means he has to be ready to perform right away today. Yep. So if he's not ready to perform today and you got to give him two, three years, that would be considered a bad draft pick. Because most of everybody who's going to be drafted in that time is going to all be 18, 19, 20 maybe. But you think with, with this new CBA, and I think it's putting an emphasis on teams building through the draft, should they be prioritizing older players? Like, It all depends. It all depends on what, your, what you have in the system, what your system, what your system is. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if a team like Miami picked them. I wouldn't. Um, They'll get him right. I don't see Spurs. They will definitely I don't, get him right. I don't, I don't see Spurs. Twin Towers? Out. You imagine Wemby and him and the same team. Oh, Think about if you were... You, da you gotta, I don't see da like Dallas trying to get some height. But for, for the most part, if you're not... If you don't think you can play him 30-something minutes, then it will be a, it'll be a bad draft pick. If you got a draft pick, you got a draft pick for a reason. Y'all trash. Everybody got a draft pick. Y'all trash. Y'all lottery. lottery. If y'all got a lottery pick, you trash. Like, ain't even no question. I'm picking a nigga that can come in and give me some hope. <laughs> <laughs> give me some hope. Give me something. To do, like, give me some kind of bright spot. And think about it. What risk are you taking with Edie to say that I'm going to regret this pick? Who is around after him or before him that you're like, oh, we should have picked him instead of him? Nobody. It'll be eight, some 18 or 19 rule. Next year, maybe. No, this year. Even least, then, who? Any we can't even or, say. But as I said, any 18, 19 rule, you got three three years. Some guy got three, two years. Like, he's a senior. You know what he is. There's you know, nothing if you pick, if you pick the young one, he doesn't have to be ready to play. But if yeah. you pick him, the older one, he got to be, be ready, ready to play. play. He's yeah. ready to play. That doesn't make sense. Because by the time... Because time you're a lottery pick. I feel like if you were a lottery pick, you should be ready to play no matter Period. what. Period. But think about it. When Wimby's, when Wimby's deal is up, Right when his rookie deal is up, he'd be 21. Right. He's already played three, four years, and turned 21. This guy's 21 right now. So by the time he's over with, it's 25. You see, there's this big gap of learning. But you talking about Wimby in comparison to everybody else in the draft? That ain't no Wimby. We no, I'm just talking about the age. It's the I, age. I get it. 21. Name all the 21 year olds right now. Paulo Benchero. That's where I. Those are the guys, so he has to be able to come in and perform today. And what to if be he there. does? What if he does? Then we. But he don't though. It just because it's an age thing. I get like you fax, you fixated on the age thing. That shit don't fucking matter because the nigga could be out of the league in two years because he was eighteen and twenty. He get to twenty and it's like, yo, we gave you two years to pan out. You didn't. Edie, twenty one. Come in four years of college, man. We're gonna give you a chance right away, right away. If you don't give us nothing in the first two years, send your ass to the D League. We, boom, boom, boom. But if now you wasted a lottery pick that's twenty three year old sending them to the G League, you're getting fired. They all doing it. They should be fired. All of them should be fired. There should only be two teams in the NBA then. How many twenty three year olds in the G League? That was Shocker. 
A lot of twenty year olds that was drafted in the lottery? Probably if you look it up. In the lottery? <laughs> Not in the <laughs> You look lottery. it up, you probably you'll find a lot of them now. Not in the lottery. All right, well let's let's keep it moving. Let's talk about the man who will be tasked with stopping Edie on the final four. A little over three weeks ago, NC State was 17 and 14, looking like they were headed for the NIT. Now they rattled off nine straight wins to reach their first Final Four since 1983. Damn. Big man DJ Burns Jr. affectionately, uh, affectionately dubbed Snack Randolph for his games oh. resemblance to Zebo. Gen Zebo is better. <laughs> you like Gen Zebo? Yeah, that one's way better. <laughs> has been a big reason for the Wolfpack success. So Burns gave Duke a 29-piece in the win Damn on it. Sunday, his second 20-point performance in tournament. So he is a super-duper senior. Uh, yeah, I saw Started that. at Tennessee, went to Winthrop, ended up at NC State, 23 years old. But uh, he's getting a lot of love, especially from uh, Nikola Jokic, who was so impro- impressed with his game that he was late to his post-ca- uh, post-game press conference. I think he's supposed to come. Actually, lefty, I so what does praise from Jokic say about DJ Burns' game? <laughs> I don't know. I guess a lot. He don't say much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I Yo, I see you over there. A lot of I see the I phone now. Say about big dudes who do things. I see the phone out, girl. What's going on? Huh? So what's going on right now? No, I was just looking at the top, the lottery picks and looking at the age. <laughs> okay, so let me go. 19, <laughs> ni- 19, 19, 19, 20. Okay, you got 19, the, 21 20. is not that old. You know, he's... Oh, no, Brad, uh, Brandon Miller was 21. Yeah. I, I feel the, like... The chat is calling him Shaquille O'Meal. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Oh, my gosh. Nah, Jen Zebo is the best one. Okay, he, got a, he got Jen an unorthodox Zebo. game. We'll just call him, what is his name? Wow. DJ Burns Jr. We'll just call him DJ B. DJ B? Mm. D, DJ. Uh, the, well, well, let's call him DJ. Let's call him DJ. Let's call yeah. his name. Why are we calling him by somebody else's name? Because it's Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's April Fool's. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Rashad, what do you think about DJ Burns' game? Unorthodox. He fucked me over on the um, higher lower the other day. I didn't really think he was going to do this this last game. I was yeah. kind of off him. I think he had like four or six the game before that. Whatever. Four and four. Yeah, it was, yeah, I was off him, off him. Tough. Like, yo, he's overrated type shit. Um, it's going to be tough for him to translate in the league, I think. Like, Listed at 6'9", I want to say 275. I would, I would imagine he's a little bit north of that. He, he you know... He take advantage of what he need to take advantage. Guys who he know can't guard him and they feed him. He can pass it. Solid player, for sure. Man, the great the college game is great, man. Right, this is great for college. Right, you know, two guys, you know, um, playing very well. You know, you know what they've been doing in the tournament is you know has has caught everyone's eyes. So let's just leave it there. <laughs> Not bringing, like, I don't, like, you know, I, I guess we can just wait till they declare to really give our opinion. But they, I mean, they got no They choice. have to. Yeah, they, they <laughs> I know, I know that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, you know, it's, 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 it's the final four, man. We don't want to, I don't want to go in on, yeah, you know. Be positive. It's April Fool's You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go, you know, April, you know. Saying I feel the same way. So he is 23, though. Huh? He is 23. I know. I know how old he is. So. Wait, what's his name? Has I know a, they said he was a he kid. I was like, man, that's right? a grown-ass man. Right? <laughs> huh? The Purdue kid. He can, I think because he got that he COVID, the COVID joint. Yeah. So he technically is they. Why are we raising him? This is his fourth season. Was oh, his fourth? Yeah. But he has a COVID one more year? Mm-hmm. That COVID year. So, Gil, you, you talked about uh, players being assigned to the G League earlier. 14 of the 30 first-round picks in 2023 have been assigned to the G League at some point yeah. this season. Mm-hmm. Damn, them stats don't be high? lying, do they? Yeah, all young kids. <laughs> stats be stat, yeah. don't they? Is that they? high? This? 14 of the what? 30. Of 30. Mm-hmm. That's high. Stat man, stat man. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's keep it college-centric. How do you think that the matchup will go down this Saturday? And we will be at, in attendance, allegedly. That's the matchup, NC State, Purdue? NC State, Purdue. I think. Oh, it's going to be nasty. Bloodbath. Yeah, I think it's going to be gonna nasty. I think he's going to have, like, On which 40 side? again. 
Yeah. Purdue. You have 40. Yeah. You, think, you think eating blood bath. <laughs> yeah. It's pick and roll. Hope, it's pick bro. and roll they showing and he rolls. Do it for Jimmy V. Blood bath. And nobody on the other side going to I mean, yeah, DJ had a great game, but like he's averaging like 13 points for the season compared to Edie, who's averaging 25. Yeah, and but 12. all bets are off. When you get yeah. that three Arizona. But it's not, it's, it's not even the 13 points. That's whatever, because it's a team thing. But for 6'9", six, 6'10", six, he's only averaging four or five rebounds. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, it. that's that. bad. That's yeah. horrible. That's really bad for... You're rebounding. a big guy that can't rebound. Yeah, he, but he can't get off the floor. Like, he He's just big, and it's weird, because... I'm very interested to see how they game. I mean, Zach Randolph wasn't a jumper, but he knew how to get ten. a rebound. He's 10. He, hey, he knew how to get boards. You know, that. so the Damn. fact that he doesn't use his body yeah. to push off and hold and get the rebound. Get it going. So, um, you know, I will take... He would probably would get dominated. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's still one game. He's probably more amped up about the matchup than, you know... What's the dude's name? Zach. Zach. Yeah, this is Zach. Yeah, I mean, he's a yeah. yeah. DJ's a career four rebound per game player. Yeah, yeah. four so, rebound again. Like that's yeah. not. So then one of them. This is not good. Yeah, this one of them games four. where he gotta have twenty rebounds. Yeah. Like this is a, he DJ? has to play out of pocket. Yeah, he just you have to. Yeah. This is the time where you need like you've been averaging four, and you've been averaging you've been averaging rebounds like your fucking Steph Curry. Okay. Mm. Now you gotta get you gotta get in there with you the big dogs. Get some this is fight for your life. This is twenty three. This is your this is your NBA tryout. This is yeah. This is your NBA tryout. Facts. You're you're you you're, too, you're too old to worry about the NBA tryout that regular one because yeah. your age done you done aged out in oh, a yeah, sense. Yeah. Right now this dude right here this is your NBA tryout. You whoop his ass. You don't need to try out with no. You don't need to go against nobody in training Facts. and in pre in pre draft camp. Facts. Just focus on so, your body. Just focus. Yeah. Get in shape. Get in get shape. Ready. Now the only way he gonna win this matchup is if he get him in foul trouble. Mhm. Mm Which is possible. That's it. NC State, 11 seed, coming in with nothing to lose. Not you got nothing, you got they nothing to lose. Turned up for that game. So they can go one of two ways. They're either gonna get smacked or they're gonna keep the Cinderella story going. Because Purdue, you know, Big Ten basketball, not a fan. Hey, but Edie ain't no punk, man. He got he's a, not. He, he got a little greedy. <laughs> he's talking his chest right, okay? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> ling Ling done taught her little son how to talk. They talk that shit, boy. People say I act like 21 is 35. Yes, you do. You, it you is. do have a, you are. It's you, not. It's not. Have y'all ever. You are ages, Hold on. Have y'all ever, have y'all ever actually did money? From an 18 year old to a 21 year old, and then made them all max players. No. Yeah, but, but what does it have to do with? That requires a lot as of. As a 21 year old, you're the number one pick. As an 18 year old, you're the number one pick, and then go from there, right? The 18 year old, think about it. He's three years in front with the same money. So when they stop maxing, he's three years in front. So his last max would be. At 35, you can max him. At 38, you're not going to max him. You see what I'm saying? So the young kid will make at least three years, just three years difference, will make in today's game two to 400 more million than a 21-year-old. Well, when you're talking from that perspective, which is the player's perspective, yes, that makes sense. But we were talking about from... General managers. General, man general, general managers general have... General manager. So wouldn't you want to pick the older player to get more out of him and then not have to pay <laughs> well, No, what I'm saying is exactly. a, general, a general manager has this... He has height, weight, age, hand span. That's it. He don't care about how much you average. They have your age there. Right. That's because I can build my future off of this person this long. That's right. right. When you look about, it, um, what was it, Michael Carter Williams? Rookie of the year. He came in at 21. Rookie of the year. Following year, we're going to go younger. I'd rather get an eight. You're 21. You're not competing to the age of where everyone else is competing. Yeah, you won rookie of the year. That's not his fault. You, you won rookie of the year. Cool. But everybody you're competing with is 18. Thanks. So if you're not 21, we're going to move on. So they traded him and went younger. All of these GMs he's given credit to. Passed on Joker. Passed on Luca. Passed on Greek. How did it pass on Luca? Luca was the third pick. Second pick, what? Right? right? No. Is the third pick in the draft? Two. Just Vladi. Two. Just Vladi. All of this metrics that they're That's using. two teams that didn't pick him. The two metrics. They, thought, hey, he was, they the, thought he was slow, but he was 18 years old. Yeah, but you talk, the metrics you're using is the metrics they've been going He's by 18. for all these years. 
And that's why the league is in shambles of where it's at right now because they've been making all these badass picks based on these that's metrics true. of age and, mm-hmm. and width look and all that. Instead of just picking the guy, hey, is he good enough to play in the NBA right now? That's what they did. They picked the guy who was good enough to play, Aiden and Bagley. They thought them was the dude. Obviously, they wasn't good enough Obviously, to play the, if, they, if they got picked by the wrong team and the duh. team didn't want to play them. Who, who was coming out? Who was the best player in college? The two best players in college? Wiseman didn't play with the fucking Golden State Warriors. Who was the two best players in college? When? Aiden. Aiden. Aiden? And Bagley. Bagley was up there. What's wrong right? with those two players? And Trey Young. What's wrong with Dallas? Them? Dallas Metrics. Dallas Metrics seen Luca and said, "Oh shit, we need him." What well, we've seen from him, his age, we want him. So and it that's had why they nothing to do with all this shit you was talking about. Yes, his and height. And it hasn't led to his any height, his It ain't led nothing. to nothing. I, it's led to Luca being amazing, and I get but the, it hasn't I get led. The, I get to sell tickets. Well, exactly. So what is I'm your what is your I'm measurement of success? Because Edie can it? sell tickets too. He's seven four. He got a whole fan base. Yeah. He got an uh-huh. Asian community. So the Aiden, so his Aiden, his Aiden. The, the, the problem is his Aiden is is the two dudes that went before Luca. Yeah. His Aiden is the two dudes that went before Luca. What you mean, Mike? What you mean? The Aiden. The Aiden, the great, the best college player. Oh, Edie. Edie. Zach. I'm thinking, I'm like, who the fuck is Aiden? Aiden. Aiden. Luca is the. You said Edie is who? (laughs) Edie is is, um, um, Bagley Bagley and and the what's the name? They're the best two players in college. Okay, but. And you see how they're considered bust. Right? Wasn't. No, they're they're not considered bust. They're old. Bagley was a freshman. 21. He was 22. Done, he was, yes. He was a double holdback. He was. He had. He, he did reclass. He reclassed back to one holdback. So how so old was he when 21. he was It was 21. And then how old was eight? Fair, why are you, 21. You gotta get move on the stats, man, because you gotta let this man just cap all day, man. Uh, I, I, I mean, Don't you know, just let this man cap you know, all Sierra day. You know, Sierra right here, bro. Come on, I know, man. I know the real age. How old is he? I can man? tell you that he went. To, he came from Arizona. They paid him two hundred thousand to come here, and then allegedly Duke paid him two hundred. Allegedly paid him two hundred thousand to get there. <laughs> so what happened? Do we really did one year in college? I'm spilling huh? all the tea, Gil. It was a beautiful house. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But I'm saying, I'm just saying, you should pick. Who they get packed up by? Uh, Bishop and Montgomery. Age. Huh? They got packed up by Bishop Montgomery. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't thing? know. I think this whole age talk is 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 nonsense. Dumb. It's All right. nonsense. All right. Well, let's let's keep. Then this. you making the league younger and unexperienced. This and then you complain gonna, about it based on who money complaining? and bags and shit. No, the, the, who's who complaining? They just stopped the whole G League at night. But who's the, is the owners complaining? The fucking Adam is the owner. like, yo, this shit is some you bullshit. Keep, you keep flip flopping point you, of views. Can the, are the owners complaining about you the talk age? About, you talk about the owners' point of view sometimes, and you talk about the owners. No, what I'm saying is, you talk about from the, the players. Gentleman, the, the general manager and the owners. Have you heard them complain about anything? No. They it's pockets media complaining. complaining. They pockets complaining because it ain't me- converting. Who? Because the motherfuckers them that you're picking that's tickets. so young ain't selling tickets because they ain't got no fucking fan base. Ha, 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 ha. You came from Ma- fucking... Ma- um, Dallas don't play no defense, right? Asar and a no man. A- Amen no, and Asar. Saying, they Do they have no. a fan base? Amen and Asar? I don't know. They came from OTE. Mm-hmm. They don't have people coming to see them. Nope. You know why? Why? Because they don't have a fucking fan base. Oh, why they don't have a fan base? Because they, they didn't go to college. They didn't, nobody knows them. Nobody knows them. Edie, with four years of Purdue, it's like we are familiar with this big seven I've ever heard. Every kid that came out of high school back in the day had a fan base from all high school kids. It has to convert. LaMelo had a fan base. He never went to college. So what is it? It has to, because he was one. One of one. That's his name. He says, I'm one of one. Yeah, we got to stop using these. Kobe. Like- Shout out LeVar Ball. <laughs> Kevin Durant. Stop using these. Kobe. Kevin Garnett. The unicorn. He's using the unicorn. I'm using uh, LeBron James. I'm using every number one pick. No. If you're the biggest thing in high school and you get drafted, you have all of high school. I'm talking about the other guys, not the number one pick. I'm talking guys? about the other guys that didn't what other guys? have the... F- Amen and Asar, Scoot. All of these guys didn't have the fan base to convert over. That's why they're struggling. That's why the league is. Oh, like they're it. struggling because they don't have a fan base. I thought it was because they. I thought you said. I it was thought about it was the basketball sales, game, though. You just I thought said it was, it was about the basketball game. It's about ticket sales. I, I thought it was the basketball keeps, game. Keeps changing your head. You keep changing That's your head. That's called moving the goalposts, Lex. He moves Sometimes it. Sometimes you make points from an owner's perspective. Sometimes you make okay, points what, from what a player's point, perspective. Okay, what point? What am I switching on? I've when said about as the owner and the general manager, I want younger. Why? Now, what have I changed? When have I said anything different? Because you're talking about how when you have to max them out, you don't make as much money if you come in older. 
right? Yes. But that's from the perspective of the player. Like, so obviously I want to go younger because I want to make more money. Mm -hmm. But if you get a good player at an old age, wouldn't you want them to come in older so you don't, you don't have to pay them all that money? You don't have to pay them, them, pay them, pay them mm -hmm. more money. See, that's you. you. You're saying that. Not me. So I'm not flip-flopping. That's just that's that's what you're. She's that's the narrative. Point. She's that's the narrative point, she wants. I'm saying as a, it's easier to sell kids to kids. So if I get a guy that's 18, 19 years old, I can sell the shit out of this kid. You don't consider 20 and 21 but you, a kid? But that's, that's not accurate, Gil, because you're not selling Scoot to kids. A... Scoot's not being sold to kids because he's not performing. But he's still you just said, but he's, trying to but, sell kids to kids. It's not working. But we still have more years because he's young. What are you talking about? Ticket sales are not converting. We're losing. We're in the red right now because we made a dumbass investment. So trade him at 20 years old. Why not? Or send his ass back to the fucking G League Ignite. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, let's keep this thing Can't moving and shaking. This <laughs> let's keep it moving. Uh, before we deep dive into <laughs> the big matchups on the women's side, we got to talk about a controversy from the Portland Regionals this weekend. So before the NC State Texas game Sunday, the teams were notified that the three point lines on each side of the court were different distances. We've got the side by side comparison right there. Uh, one was standard, the other one was shorter <laughs> at the top of the key. So the teams were given the option of playing with the court as is or waiting more than an hour for the error to be fixed. They said, no thanks, let's just play the game. Crazy. Uh, with NC State getting the win in advance of the Final Four. So there were a total of five games played on the court from Friday to Sunday. Teams actually shot better on the standard three-point line compared to the shorter one. Uh, they made 33% of those attempts compared to 29% from the shorter line. Still the court there. will be fixed in time for the UConn-USC game tonight. So did every team before complain? Or nobody, just the first, nobody noticed. This is the first game that they noticed. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy. Because once they pointed it out, it was so glaring. Yeah. And I'm like, how did we, nobody peeped it? Not a single person. Uh-uh. No. Yikes. Do you change something? Mm -hmm. You change, like, the outcome of the games and shit? How can you change the outcome of the game? You can't. I'm just saying, like, what do you, can you complain about it? Oh, you can't complain. complain. Why not? Uh, you better Both got the same fair advantage. What is it oh, yeah, complaining we about? Both we both were doing it. We're side, both playing the same game. Side of the court. You one way I get to go against a long one. One way you get to go against a long one. Nothing changes. Yep. We both have the same advantage or disadvantage. Both okay, of us. But nobody should have a disadvantage at all. But we both. So we both have the same. If one rim is eleven feet, one rim is nine, and we switch in that half, we are both going through the same thing. Yeah. Chris High School has has no. Yeah, I don't think it really. You can't lose and then I don't complain. think it really has a real outcome of how the game would <laughs> have panned out. But I'm just like, you can't play on a court like. You dude. can't say yeah and then. Oh yeah, lose I don't know why they like, didn't. Oh, I don't right. know why they didn't <laughs> let them. You know the, the hoops at Crenshaw one was like ten two. Mm -hmm. The other one was regular. They had the opportunity <laughs> to fix it, and the coach was like, "Nah, it's cool." And then he went and complained after the game for about when they lost. Yeah, because he you can't you complain do after the game. Hey. They offered to fix it, and you said, no, we good. We know, because he thought it was going to be an advantage because he's a <laughs> he three thought it was going to be an exactly. advantage, and he ended up losing anyway. And the girl ended up shooting the shit out the ball from the long side. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, for him to go on the podium and complain was kind of odd. I just wonder how it took that long. Friday, Saturday. Like, y'all not looking? It had to be someone in the stands that's looking at it. Well, they was checking it out in uh, pregame warm-ups. One of the coaches did a little... They was stepping. I know, but before they did that, someone had to but be coming in. You can see, the, the the see it, like, looking at, like... You can see it on the game angle. It don't look the same. Yeah. But, yeah, that's nutty. So someone must like, have been coming good. down, looking at it, like, yo. Those three lines are not equal. Mm. Yeah, no. Like, would it make a difference for your jumper, either one of those three point ones? Um, no. It's still wet. I mean, the line doesn't really... I don't really play at the line anyway. So you know. But as far as, like, spacing and stuff, like, there's a clear advantage versus disadvantage of having a bigger three-point line, I think. Well, at least it will be corrected in time for the USC-UConn game tonight so we can watch Juju and Paige Beckers go head-to-head. -head yeah, the final four them. bid on the line. Uh, but let's talk about the other game tonight, a uh, moment the college basketball world has been waiting for. LSU-Iowa rematch. Caitlin Clark and them versus Angel Reese and them. Uh, the last time these squads faced off was in the Natty game last year Absolutely. when this happened. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Angel got a lot of heat and criticism Oof. for being the competitor. Letting her know. What a look time. at the look at the ring finger. What a time. Let him know. What a, it's crazy that that was almost a year I know. ago. 365, four days, whatever it was. It happened on April 2nd. Last year, so before what should be a historic night for the women's college game, Angel Reese had this to say about going against Caitlin Clark. Me and Caitlin Clark don't hate each other. <laughs> like, I want everybody to understand that it's just a super competitive game. And, like, I would just wish people re realized that. Like, once I get between those lines, it's no friends. I have plenty of friends on the court that I talk to outside of the game. But, like, when I get between those lines, like, we're not, we're not friends. We're not buddies. I'm going to talk trash to you. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get in your head the whole entire game. But after the game, we can kick it. Like, I don't <laughs> think people really realize that. And... That's fine. Um, I'll, I'll take the I'll take the villain role. I'll take the the hit for it. But I know we're going women's basketball, and if this is the way we're going to do it, then this is the way we're going to do it. You like it or you don't. So before we talk about the matchup, I just you know touch on what Angel said. Embracing the villain role. What what is villainous about talking shit and playing basketball at a high level? Yeah, people think basketball and sports is played with class. <laughs> I think they think this shit is like tennis and and and, and golf, golf. <laughs> right? Everything is shh. Yeah. Sir, no. <laughs> Football and basketball is a shit talking sport. That's what it is. So anyone who's sitting there yapping and scoring, you kind of don't like them. Yeah, I don't know. I've never looked at Angel as a villain, so yeah. I I don't like that she feels that way. But I'm very happy that she's continued to just be herself. And they win. She won Player of the Year. They're back in the Elite Eight. Um, oh, she won Player of the Year. SEC Player of the Year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, where's Caitlin Clark? Big Ten. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, different conferences. Different conferences. Different conferences. Um, yeah, I mean, but she's completely right. They are growing women's basketball. So it's been exciting to watch. I appreciate the pettiness. I think it's very interesting. Can they all go back to school? Uh, yeah, right. Well, Kaylin's not. Kaylin's already announced that she Kaylin's is. Already going that would have been great if they went back one more year. Nah, they <laughs> do it again. Be, this is it's perfect. <laughs> no, because one more year would have been like all right, overkill. You I think mean. Paige should have stayed, or when, when she should have came out, right? I don't think so. No? Mm -hmm. right. So look. What? Shad, you got I, some. I, just, I love the villain shit. You know, there's heroes and then there's villains. So who's the hero? But Who villains are, the heroes? are heroes to Right some. now? Mm -hmm. Caitlyn's the hero right now. Wasn't I she think a South villain? Carolina's the heroes. But wasn't Caitlyn, like, wasn't Caitlyn a villain? That's what I'm before? saying. That's what I'm saying. She was a villain before. Last year, Kalen was the villain. She, she was the villain until that last moment of the last game. LeBron and Steph are the superheroes. Who's the villain? Then you got like Dylan Brooks. Wait, well, that doesn't count. That's uh, not even cool. That's they a, are, but there's gonna be another superstar. Yeah, you can't have okay. a Dylan Brooks type player. LeBron is, is viewed as a villain by LeBron a lot of people. Okay, so okay Draymond's not. Yeah, a Yeah, LeBron star. is the villain. Okay. Steph is the hero. In a sense. No, because LeBron doesn't play villain. He doesn't play bad guy. But in a lot of people's heads, he's they the look, He looks like the but he doesn't play bad guy. Like, I don't think there is a superstar that plays bad guy. I don't think Angel plays bad, bad guy play either. Guy. She just, just talks her shit. That's she's it. more of a Draymond to me. Like, she's a star Draymond. Hell yeah. That she takes makes the role very of I don't. Plays. She's yeah, I, her. and I'll talk shit and yeah. back it up type shit. Like, if. Like, villain would be KG. I would consider KG a villain superstar. Like, Rashid wasn't as much of a superstar as the rest of them, but he would be a villain. Like, Angel but, not out there getting texts, like... Yeah. No, but she's talking her she's shit. Talking she's talking shit, but a yeah, lot but that's of players what I'm saying. That's what I said. It was Caitlin Clark was the villain because she was doing this to everybody, talking her... She's a shit talker herself, right? So she's like the Larry Bird. She's yeah, a big Caitlin shit talker. Talking her shit what too. ended up happening is she got hit with her own medicine, and because she got hit with her own medicine, everybody's like, oh, no, you can't do that to our... And then... That's how she turned into the villain. To me, it was like the Joker beating Batman for the first time. No, and everybody Angel looked at it, everybody Angel, watched it. Angel wasn't J Batman, I mean, Joker at the time. And also, the, she wasn't, the crazy thing about last season, though, was, was Iowa, neither one of them was supposed to win last year. South Carolina was supposed to win mm -hmm. last year. Like, they are supposed to win this year as well. So, heroes, South Carolina right now, to me. But who are who's I think the main depending on what Carolina? side you're on, the villain is Kalen or Angel. 
like, they, well, that's they were they're villains. Like, they're like that's co-villains. That's what they were, like, that's what said Angel wasn't actually a villain. She was just a player. They're like and co-villains. She just, at the end of the game, when yeah. she did this, that made her the villain. Yeah, I think that's you done Thanos. You done Thanos to Thanos. <laughs> I'm looking at like you said, South Carolina can be like to me. They they're X Men. They're the X Men. They they're they're the, the academy. No, they're, the they're, the, they're the academy or the Avengers. One or the other, right? They're the but then you Avengers. got you got Magneto, and then you got uh, fucking uh, Lex Luthor. Like that's Caitlyn and Angel. Right. They yeah. on the outside. Yeah. They on the outside. Yeah. Like man, fuck this. Fuck South Carolina. You know what I'm saying? South Carolina sitting pretty, undefeated. They play the right way. Don's amazing. Heroes. Yeah. Can they be beat? I don't think so. What is their, what is their weakness? Because I know the guard who couldn't shoot last year, she can shoot shooting. now. <laughs> She's shooting. She's shooting now. Shooting I think it's the big girl. Now. So. Their weakness, sometimes I think their weakness is like they, they're, they get bored, bored. sometimes mm. in games. They get you bored. You can tell. They'll get a little lead. They start doing some goofy shit on the floor. Like mm. last game, they started doing the Macarena during a free throw or a timeout. <laughs> and, then the, and then they came back a little mm. bit. And then they had to lock in and tighten up. So I think like Dawn, the way that she's, because she tells, she talks about them all the time, that they're very silly. They're like very goofy. She calls them the daycare. Mm. The way that she's, a lot, she's been able to keep them very locked in and composed and go undefeated has been like very impressive because you can tell their game slippage is mental. Yeah. Trey Young is the villain. Yeah. Ooh, that's a villain. That's a good one. We call him the superstar guy. Yeah, that's but a But to me, I'm, I'm Hero I'm, to Hawks fans. I'm looking at the guy. I think Ant Edwards, <laughs> and Aunt Edwards who hates is the a Knicks. villain guy. Nah. Because he talks shit to the Kawhis. He, he don't back nah, down. Nah, but he's too likable. But he don't back down. Young he's nigga versus like- the old nigga Kawhi. <laughs> yeah, like I like the that. The whole arena. It's basically saying, fuck you. Right. When there's, but that's the villain. When you ain't even in the playoff series and they chanting. Which is why Kaylin is not a villain because she got the whole opponent's well, arenas yes. going crazy well, for I'm, her. I'm looking at it from a Writing standpoint letters. of like players. <laughs> we love you, and <laughs> Look, I'm looking at it from a player challenging player perspective, not necessarily the fans considering you the mm-hmm. villain, like a Lance Stevenson type. Like Lance was mm-hmm. villain to LeBron. He, I'm going to stand up and blow in your ear type shit and don't give a fuck. Like, I'm looking at it from that perspective, so yeah. I'm like, all right, if it's Angel and Caitlyn, Angel's like, yeah. I don't give a fuck about you, man. Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny is I know if, if Caitlyn wins, she's going to hit her back with it. Ooh, that'd be, oh, that'd be, oh, that'd be, think she will? That'd be oh my God, that'd be Backs. so iconic. Why not? Backs. You have to. Dog. So you have to. She already cocky with it. You have to. And she's so, if you look at her back, she is so competitive that, of course, Soon as you can't do that though because soon as they, they, not, they didn't new. win a championship. Don't matter. We beat y'all. Oh, cha- oh yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. You can't do that. But we beat y'all. Not out the though. ring, but she can. She can yeah, do, she can do that. Has she done it this year? Oh, he's not really. No. No. Oh, they so took- Iowa currently favored in the game. Lexi, give us your prediction. Is, is Iowa going to win in advance of the final four? I just want it to be a great game. That's all I'm saying about that. So, how should LSU guard Caitlin Clark tonight if they want to repeat it last season? If I am LSU, full court pressure, Caitlin, right? When she's on the right side of the floor, you ice the ball screens and keep her on the right side. She's on the left side of the floor, you force her into the ball screen, the right hand, and trap her. That's a simple way of guarding her. But she does so much for that team. I don't know if like there's a way to like stop her, but as far as like schemes, that's what I would that's what I would do. I see a lot of discrepancies in her game when I watch the full game. I think a lot of people give her credit because the highlights that we see when you watch her highlights, they look incredible. I've seen a lot of discrepancies. And um, even what you say with that breakdown, she had 15 assists. Right. So it's clear she can find the open man. But I think wearing her down early, I would even consider the trap early, not even just full court pressure, like trap her, get it out of her hands. She loves to run around. She got a lot of energy. But if you don't put pressure on her on the defensive end, that's where you lose. You got to get her in foul trouble. Yeah. You got to make her guard. Who do, you, who do you think wins tonight? LSU. LSU. It's hard, but isn't it hard for them, hard to get her in foul trouble because she's just in the zone? You're not, yeah, you're not getting ki- Well, last you're year not. they got her in foul trouble. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen this year. I don't think they can play zone against LSU. But I don't LSU think that the, of, well, reason. now they have, because last season with the ball screen coverages that I was just talking about, I, don't, I didn't think they had the personnel to do that. But with their transfer player, Morrow, 
playing in that ball screen defense, I think she can really give Caitlin trouble as the post defender. Yeah. She gets she gets a lot of steals and she's real active. I think Morrow and Faje are the X factors for LSU. Do, who do you got uh, winning the game tonight, LSU or Iowa? I don't give a shit. Well, Kale, can you just... No, I don't give a shit about no good day. I'm not watching the game. You're not Why watching? not? Juju. I'm watching Juju. Comes on after. Yeah, I'm watching after, after the end. <laughs> watch both. <laughs> you can watch both. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm not watching no girls basketball. So. All right. Yeah. Ew, I thought we were growing. <laughs> they, don't even, they don't even touch the backboard. I thought we were growing. They don't even tapping on people. I thought like, we you were growing. Good one, Gil. Good one. You remember tapping? Good one. Not even tapping. Y'all don't even tapping. I thought we were growing. Daughter. Like, even we was watching men's. But you gonna watch. She gonna. We I don't even. She's gonna basketball. be like, oh man. She is going. definitely gonna I make you watch. watch that game. Oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing ESP and I'm watching the highlights like everybody I else. Thought. Nobody's watching the full game. Stop it. You ain't watched the full game. Yet. Thank you. Security. I, I know you are listening. I'm just like everybody in the chat. Security. We watch the highlights and we go from there. Other than that. Can you just watch one half? Gil, most people in the chat don't have cable. You have a Supreme. I need you to watch one half so when I come tomorrow, we can actually have an intelligent, normal conversation. Yes, about the game. Actually, about the game. Gil, it's your job. It's your birthright. That's a challenge, man. Just one this half. is Gil's Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Or, whoop, whoop. Watch the first quarter and the fourth quarter. You know what Okay, you I'll watch the last five minutes of the game. No! <laughs> okay, the first five the minutes part. and the last five yeah. minutes. You know, I mean, we're just gonna see a whole bunch of you know, layups, a whole you bunch of You know what everybody travels, should do before watching a whole the game? bunch of jump stops. <laughs> 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 I just let lazy, I just let lazy. Yeah. Bro, stop. <laughs> I can't wait to see you I can't wait to see you at Louisville being a being a fan. Oh, yo. <laughs> hey man, I hate A whole you, bunch man. of great passes on thumbs down. <laughs> Executing <laughs> proper basketball, <laughs> man. Come on, man. Let the proper basketball. Uh, proper yeah. basketball. We yeah. got you, Lexi. I'll be watching. No. I'm watching. I'm watching full game. I'm watching full game. Yeah. Lexi, no I got you. Lexi. I thought we were growing. I got you, Lexi. I thought we were growing. We were, we were headed in the right direction. I thought we were headed in the right direction. We're headed in the right direction. God. We're headed in the right direction. Come on. We're going to watch all... See, you smoke, smoke don't want to work. You don't use all the smoke. smoke don't want to work. Slow motion is better than no motion. The jump slow motion is better than no motion. But you know what's a good <laughs> idea for everybody to do before watching that game tonight? Download the Underdog Fantasy app. Use promo code Gil for a hundred dollar deposit match. Get those higher lowers going. The pickums will be picking Underdog Fantasy is still giving away a free pickum. If you download that right now, use promo code yeah, GIL. My sister said you're hilarious. Just saying the jump stop. Proper <laughs> jump stop. Hilarious, man. Some people like watching high quality basketball. <sighs> but let's talk a little bit more about that, that LSU and that kind of villain side. So uh, we got to touch on an unfortunate situation the LSU squad dealt with prior to their Elite Eight matchup with UCLA. On Friday, a column in the LA Times caused a stir after describing UCLA as America's sweethearts and LSU as basketball's villains. Uh, UCLA was called milk and cookies. LSU was called Louisiana hot sauce. <laughs> what else did he call them? They were also what? referred to as dirty debutantes. Uh, Nasty which, work. Damn. Uh, Nasty Google work. search will, will link you to a several volume series of dirty debutante videos. Oh, what is that? That is a, some of your favorite content, Gil. Some of your favorite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so after the game, Kim Mulkey addressed the article. It was good versus evil in that game today. Evil? Called us dirty debutantes? Take your phone out right now and Google dirty debutantes and tell me what it says. Oh, I already did it. Dirty debutantes? Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna let you talk about 18 to 21 year old kids in that tone. It was even sexist for this reporter to say UCLA was milk and cookies. Now you women sit there and you keep your mouth shut if you want. I'm in the last third of my career, but I'm not gonna let sexism continue. And if you don't think that's sexism, then you're in, in denial. How dare people attack kids like that? You don't have to like the way we play. You don't have to like the way we trash talk. You don't have to like any of that. We're good with that. 
But I can't sit up here as a mother and a grandmother and a leader of young people and allow somebody to say that. So LSU guard. Work. Huh? Nasty work. What is you what Googled is it? Yeah. We don't, we don't, I don't know what that means. So, I mean, how's this? I don't know how that's like a direct America's opposite of hot sauce. Cookies. I mean, I'm a Louisiana hot sauce fan. That's just no, I'm just saying, what is sexist about milk and cookies? I mean, is there something we don't know? I think dumbing down the, the women's game to those. Milk and cookies and hot sauce? That's how. No, I'm just, I, was I mean, we're talking sexist. about sports, so why would, like... No, I'm just saying, what is the sexist like, it's part? It's being compartmentalized I'm, to sexism when it just should be, like, either you hate it or you love it. Not uh, with the writer. Like, you know, just for. hate it or love it. Like, I think we start separating words and phrases, and like it should shouldn't be sexist. I guess it's just like milk and cookies. Just hate. Like milk and cookies isn't supposed Oreo, to be like sweet versus Oreo, like, something that's. Say like America's Cookie on the wrapper or something. It, it is a like well-respected cookie Hershey's in this. I mean, I think cookie was resorting. I don't know. I don't know what the like something we like. Good love. Good versus evil was the general tone of it. That's what I'm saying. Is this supposed to be like oh milk and cookies? We love it, and then we hate hot sauce. But we Louisiana hot sauce is too hot. Too hot. I love a delicious both. hot sauce, mind you. Most My people, favorite. Most spicy. People love both. Hmm? Oh, it's the difference. Spicy versus spicy versus the, 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 milk thing that, cookies? the things that stops yeah. the spice. A dessert versus the milk a condiment. To stop That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I was, yeah. yeah. But, he just he just it just kept getting worse. So Ella <laughs> just just <laughs> every time you rephrase it, worse and worse and worse. Okay. Well, LSU guard Haley Van Lith also discussed the article while pointing out how she gets treated as a white player in comparison to her black teammates. I think, you know, we do have a lot of black women on this team. Um, we do have a, a lot of people that are from different areas. And unfortunately, you know, that, that bias does exist still today. And a lot of the people that are making those comments are being racist um, towards my teammates. And, um, you know, I'm in a unique situation where um, I see it with myself, you know, I'll talk trash and I'll get a different reaction than if Angel talks trash. And so it, it's really up to me to, you know, uh, it's not up to me, but I have a duty to my teammates um, to have their back. I know that's right, Haley. Mm -hmm. And on the milk and cookie subject, you should, like, I think you used to have Diddy Reese. The cookies were ass, but they were 25 cents a cookie. So people would come from far and wide <laughs> to buy cookies. To buy mediocre cookies. Yeah. Just pointing out. I don't, I just, I'm not really sure where he was going with. So, the question for you, Lexi. Talk. Should this open up a bigger discussion on how black women are covered not only in women's basketball, but across all sports? Uh, I mean, I think we've been having this conversation for a while now. So, just to see it here at the, at the, at the college level. Like now, we were dealing with it like as, like adults, professionals, and now you're you're just attacking like kids, like Kim said. So I guess it's hitting people a little harder because these are 18, 19, 20 year olds that you're talking crazy about, acting like they don't, they're not people. But whoever he wrote was writing, I just thought, I thought the article was poorly written in, overall. Like I don't really know what no. UCLA's never been looked at as America's anything. Uh, Respectfully, the men's. On some I, didn't even, I didn't even know the women's team was actually uh, good. They were good this year. They were very good this year. Uh, Top five for the year. Oh, yeah. Advanced farther than Arizona men's basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> Our former conference foe. I just hate that we're hey, here I, a year later and we're still doing this. What was race I, I thought, stuff. This wasn't the hotel one. That hmm? was. Good. When, that was. What team was that? Utah. Utah. So, you know, yeah, Utah. When they were um, in Idaho? Oh, uh, yeah, they, they played in Spokane. Uh, Gonzaga was hosting the... the, the Wait, were they round. in Idaho? So they stayed in Idaho, though. So anybody who knows, Gil, you know, when we used to uh, take those Washington trips, we played Washington State. I don't the, remember. Moscow, Idaho, Gil, the janky... The so they were Best playing West. in Spokane and stayed in Idaho? Stayed in Idaho. was like 30 minutes away. So it's right on the, the border on that side. But yeah, we, we to, played in Spokane. We were not in Idaho. Usually you stay at the Double Tree. I think right over there, good cookies. I'm pretty sure we were. But when you play Washington State, you stay in Moscow, Idaho. It's like a heavy neo-Nazi area, so they basically oh instruct you like, don't fucking leave the hotel, like you know, or go in a group. Why would they put? Yeah. Okay. So my question was when when it when it said the team Utah being 
being they, chased. They were harassed by some people in the U Utah? No, in Idaho. The Utah women's team. The Utah, Utah women's women, team. U, Utah, right? Yes, Utah has, has several black players. Oh, they, oh, they got black people on the team? They don't That's really much like have very, very many white players. Utah don't have no white players? Not how you're probably thinking. Oh, I'm thinking like when it was like Utah, I'm like... You thinking like BYU type shit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's no. not like that. Mammoth and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. They're yeah. a pretty diverse group. Oh, okay. We've expanded all over. So they just only chase, they only chase the Negros. <laughs> <laughs> that one way to Their interpret it. Their best player is... I don't know. She's not black, but I don't want to say the wrong thing, but she's not Islander? Black. Yeah. And then in regards to the L.A. Times article, it was edited, that line was removed, uh, referring Steve to... He still said it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You might as well left it there. I know. How you might as well. It doesn't did, change the shit. I just want to know how many people read that and were like, yeah, that's good. That sounds good. Everybody from L.A. Golly. So after the game, Angel Reese did a little trolling on her IG story. She uh, probably got some milk cookies. <laughs> the milk and cookies. <laughs> You'll notice that's Frank's Red Hot, which... Delicious hot sauce in its own right. We love milk and cookies. They taste so good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, Alexa, are the criticisms of Angel Reese unfair? I mean, it seems like she gets a lot of heat for her style of play. Talking trash. All the things that I love that make, make the game even more yeah, entertaining. Yeah, it's definitely unfair. I think it's a little much. But she plays right, she plays right into it. So, again, she's embraced it. And she's performed well. In spite of it, I think. But, yeah, people are definitely doing a lot. But I see it on the other side, too. There's a lot of people that love her and love what she's doing for the game. And then you see Caitlyn getting a lot of criticism, but also a lot of love. So it's really on what you focus on. And we will all be watching the game, the entire Gil's Arena Even crew, Gil. including Gilbert Arenas, the full game. I'm not even going to April Fool's, y'all. <laughs> I'm not even going to April Fool's. Okay, well, if you don't watch the game, then you don't get to say anything tomorrow about it. But I'm going to watch the highlights. No, because I'm going to be watching the whole game. I know, but you're not going to trick me. You're not going to be able to trick don't me. Don't be a what? Trick you. Casual. The man yeah. said, don't be a fucking casual, we're all, bro. We're all casuals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, don't be one today. <laughs> There's only one that's not. Me. Yeah, <laughs> duh. <laughs> I know y'all are all casuals. All right, we're going we gonna, to we gonna watch. I mean, you don't, I just said, all, you don't Do you know Martin came First out on all, Netflix? Man. Martin came out on Netflix, y'all. You don't it have came, to watch, but Net tomorrow you don't get to say Martin nothing about came, the game. But I'm saying, yeah, what does Martin out come in on Netflix have to do? And you can watch, <laughs> right, what? you can binge watch old episodes of Martin at any point for Facts. the rest of the week. Facts. You're right, you're right. My Tuesday my, is to Lakers Friday. Friday? There's no Lakers game today. Damn, so I don't have no excuse. You have no, that was not a good excuse either. ain't no casual. I watched this shit. Okay, good. I had to watch this shit all my life. My sister play games. He just watches. I watch it. Sister gives him the clip. No, oh, I like watching basketball. I'm a fucking student in this fucking game. I watch both sides. Do you believe that? Yes. I believe. Wow. All I'm saying, you don't have to watch. But when we when we in here tomorrow talking about it, you don't get to say anything. Unless I watch it. Unless you watch it. Okay. And I'm gonna ask you very specific questions about the game <laughs> that you could not see in highlights. <laughs> So like, the three point I'm going to make certain things that happen throughout the game okay, and be like, <laughs> what happened at, at this time? Okay. Let me say. Hey, chat. All our chat. No. Watch the game. <laughs> when she asks, just throw it in the chat and I'll read it. I'll be like, what points did they make at the timeout at this time? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Were the three point lines the same distance? <laughs> Most importantly. Most but now important. let's get into some hibachi time. Get your AC broke, dog? No, nothing. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a little toasty. It's a little toasty in here. Okay, I appreciate it. We got a little fan going now. Oh, wait, you better check your water. <laughs> no, you better check your water, you know? <laughs> we're, we're, That's how they get you. You be drinking regular water. Next thing you know, you sleep. <laughs> and somebody's sitting there, take that, take that. No diddy, no diddy, no diddy. No. Leave them alone. Y'all done? Did y'all hit the recording? Stop. Stop. I'm just. Do y'all believe? Stop. Do you believe it? Do you believe? Do you believe that? Do you believe? Do you, believe? you heard? It? <laughs> do you believe? It's it's supposed to be Meek Mills and Diddy. I'm not interested. Good. Like I, I'm thinking it's AI. I don't, 
I'm just, just saying. I don't know. That's good. They can Everybody gonna blame, blame AI. AI. Right? Blame AI. I would. <laughs> I would. <laughs> blame AI. Blame AI. Hey, <laughs> but the nigga said he was on the door, like. I know. What, what, how? Outside the hotel, inside the, he was inside the, like. You gonna blackmail me, I'm gonna blackmail you. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, y'all have all this no, no diddy, no diddy. videos and recordings and I all know, of a sudden somebody release just, them. Just give it time. Fucking weird. Just See, that's what I'm saying. How long? Like, so you've been holding that for what, years? Yeah, give it for time. what? Like, yeah. y'all are weirdo. To this time. I don't know. That what was you mean for what? For this particular moment <laughs> Listen, I don't right know. here? When all this shit hit the fan, it's like... I, I, but if wrong is wrong, if you see someone doing some weird shit, why are you just not expose it at that moment? You're just doing it for yourself. I don't know if it's... some weird shit for a long time. You can't go expose some shit when you've been doing some shit. You didn't see shit. Because you were doing shit. I don't know if it was AI or not. Whoever it was was hurting for squirting. Stop. <laughs> and on to basketball uh, on Gil's Arena presented by... <laughs> Thank you. Call she, didn't listen to, she didn't listen to it. That's why. I'm you not going not. to you either. You better not listen to <laughs> it. I'm not. Gil, we're close to hitting you with a flagrant two. Don't flagrant two. It will that. return to Lexi's Arena presented by Underdog <laughs> Fed. Just one point. Right. It's like, ouch, cheating. I'm just playing. <laughs> Go. All right. Come on, Joe. Go, Come on, Joe. Joe. Do your job, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> you make it extremely difficult, Gil. Because gotta be more I try with all my man. might. You gotta be more aggressive. I know, be more aggressive. God damn. You, gotta, you like, gotta be aggressive you like you want. You supposed no, to be boxing out and rebounding and shit. You just let him just. Yeah, he writes the check. You gotta be a check. You the check. You write the check. You when you get more aggressive. You gotta be aggressive just like he was on that video. Stop. And now moving on to basketball. Friday night. Friday night, the Knicks Spurs game turned into a bucket getting bonanza. Jalen Brunson dropped a career high 61 points, second most in Knicks history behind Melo 62 back in 2014. But it wasn't enough Man, to the get fuck? the Knicks a win. <laughs> you see that, dog? Oh, we oh came through with the best game of his rookie season, dropping a career high 40 points, going along with 20 rebounds, seven assists. Wimby is the first rookie with a 40 20 game since Shaq in 1993. Let's, let's just enjoy some bucket getting. Oh, J Gil's favorite player, Jalen Brunson. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see this shift right. in your mentality. But like we said, Wimby came through in OT. The alien, as you will. And uh, after the OT win, Wimby celebrated by chucking the game ball into the stands. Wimby was fined 25000 by the league for throwing the ball into the stands. What? What? $25,000. Why? And who knows? That's the, that's the standard fine. Standard fine is for throwing, throwing something ball? into throwing the ball. Specifically. The game oh. ball. Yeah. Add no a silver what, game ball into. If, okay. Mm, I that. guess. Give me 25 for them things. But yeah. question for Jalen Brunson. Obviously, Knicks lost the game. Would you want the game ball if you dropped a 60-piece in a loss? Mm. Me? Yeah. No. I don't even know how you're going to answer. Nah. 61 career high? They didn't lose because of me. They lost because of y'all. <laughs> hey, we're like, back. Thing like a we're, real selfish man. That's no. just the, yeah, I'll keep I dropped 61. What else y'all want me to do? Win the fucking game, bro. Okay, well, y'all gotta well, you help already me. Scored forty, they fucking won. question. Y'all got to help, Rashad. If you dropped Maybe sixty-one if you in the scored game, forty, they would have won. If I, I drop what? What? Sixty. If you drop sixty-one in the game, your career high. What about it? Do you want the ball? Is that loss on no, you? I don't give a fuck about the ball. <laughs> what the fuck, I give a fuck. And about you lost the ball to the Spurs. Ball. And you lost to the fucking Spurs. In San Antonio. I know they got alien on there, but come on. In San Antonio. Still the Spurs. Listen, I'm not a sentimental material nigga like that. I don't give a fuck about no ball. Where's the win at? Where's the win? Listen, I had a conversation last night. We play the game, the game. Any game you play, what's the purpose of playing? To win. Any game, checkers, Monopoly, whatever. We're going to race down the street. We're going to play this game. Win the game. So if you're not fucking winning, what the fuck is the point? I don't get it. But I'm different. I'm a different one. Um, especially if it's coming a team. If it's a team thing, and we're like all together, like we all win if we win. But yeah, you keep yeah. note. Oh. Obviously, it's a sentimental day, no. but they lost. <clears throat> you don't get. Uh, uh, 20, 30 years from now, the only thing that I do have memory of is I scored 60 points. That's a. So you should take that's a that's a club. Sixty right. points is a club. My sixty usually point every, jersey. Everybody who scored sixty usually have their ball, and they you know they get to look back on it in, in life. Get a little nigga. Trust the ball, me, but when you when you get older and all you have left is memories of when you played. 
You're not thinking so if you about don't get no the ball, win. The memory doesn't exist. I anymore. can't tell you if I won that game with Kevin Garnett or what's the name or the, the D Wade or that. You don't so remember. So there's nothing else you could use to comm comm commemorate you scoring 60 <clears throat> other than having the game ball in a game that you lost. I don't know your the, jersey. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't know because you got to use that jersey for the next game. The I, highlights. I the memory itself. Listen, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm definitely not walking around like, man. I need the symbol of that memory. I need to see this ball, these shoes, and none of that. Man, I remember. I remember when I whooped y'all ass. I remember that day I got that autograph. I remember that day that man scores. I don't need that. I'm about memory. You see that right there. I get to turn around and say, Obama said right there in that chair. That was his first and only NBA game ever as a president. That's cool. So I get that. I, I mean, that's just me, so yeah. I'm taking my 60. Would you, the have team would you take, go retrieve the it team, from the stands? The, the, hell, yeah. Oh, no, nah, bro. Um, hey, 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 player. Yeah, you, you and you. After Give me that down losing, here. They're not giving you that Give ball me back. that down here. They're What's not, your cash app? <laughs> What's nah, your cash app? They keep in Wemby's 40-20 ball. You how much, how much would you, I mean, how much would you pay for that? Yep. How how much, if you're Jalen Brunson. How much you giving up for that ball? How much you paying a fan who caught that? <sighs> <laughs> if it means something. Sixty so dollars? And I mean, I'm just talking about sixty for him. Oh, I'm about to say. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he's that type of dude. Well, I'm talking That's about what I'm you, I don't know if he's that type of. If you, I'm asking you. You are Jalen Brunson. You're not pretending to be Jalen Brunson. You are you and Jalen. I'll Brunson. switch my jersey for the ball. They don't want it. You lost. They it's want a Wem fan. A they fan. want Wemby's 40-point ball. A fan don't ball. give a f I mean, th that's true. That's a 40 and 20 from Wemby, too. So, so how that's much you paying to get the ball back? That's an important. That's an important ball. So how much you paying to get that ball back? If you're Jalen. If you're Jalen. Yeah, I'll be if you're Jalen. If you're Jalen. Ooh, because you can sell it you as a Wemby 40-20 ball. You got a fan in a Wemby jersey holding the ball. I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm the fan in the Wemby jersey, I'm not selling it. You know why? LA? Because if I can get Jalen Brunson one day, I'll like drive, I'll drive out of San Antonio so he don't think it's a San Antonio ball. And I'll drive like down to Houston, outside the hotel, get him to sign that ball, and then get Wimby to sign the ball. Then I got both dudes ball on that. That's cracking. No Woo! Uh, that, I'm, Again, that, you that's a hustle. Nobody's damn question. I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't know, I don't then know. Then you answer the question if he was the fan. If I, no. uh, I, I probably, I probably give him ten racks. Wow, I probably give really? ten racks for the ball. He's not taking that ten. I know, that's what I'm saying. Big more. You got two. Oh, you got two. You got two. Yeah, ain't you nobody got two. Scored. He ain't scored. Nobody scored forty twenty since ninety three. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm you got. Two people. You got two people that. And I'm gonna do everything I can to get Wimby to sign that ball. But it's and it's Wimby, and it's a generation we never yeah. seen a motherfucker like this. And I got it. And he threw it too. So hey, I'm the one who signed the ball. Can you sign it for me? So what if, if he's like, nah, let me get that back. back? Yeah, let me give you twenty thousand. So how much funnier is it that Wimby chucked a ball? He had forty and twenty games. Right. Like, he, don't like, he, don't he don't care. He don't care. He don't care. He said this life. I respect it. I'm doing it again. I'm, do pretty, it. I'm pretty sure for him, he gonna score forty and twenty. That, that's just another. But you never, you never forget your first time. I would yeah. think scoring forty and twenty. I'm never done. Listen, it. man, when you when you like that, you don't give a fuck about no first time, second time, third time. We don't fucking operate in those type of sceneries, man. I, we used to this shit, man. But you, I'm just saying we, we but, saying. <laughs> God, I don't have, I, I'm cut from that type of blood. I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't I have my 54. You. I don't I'm have my first saying. 40. I don't. That wasn't a thing. Do you have the, the 60 point Laker ball? <sighs> you know what you need to do. I, I, no, you fucked up the lot. I got it. I end up, oh, got, I end up getting it because I had to take the air out because it's their ball. <laughs> so it's one of their game balls. So I had to take the air out of it and sneak it out. But I think I lost it. Or someone else stole it from so, me. So I stole a ball and someone stole it from me. Okay. Yeah. But let, let's talk about the Wimby so side now. In conclusion, Jalen Brunson should not want that 60-point ball because he'll just lose it or something. How you know what he's going to do? He might hold on to it tight. <sighs> he might not be, like, careless like I am. I'm pretty sure some BM took it. <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. So Spurs have already been eliminated from the playoffs. I think they're looking to strengthen their roster with another high lottery pick. But how important is it for Wimby to learn how to win in the league this season? Like how, how, how much of a big deal is a game like that with, with all the adversity they've suffered this year for your franchise player, the future of this At franchise? At this point, he just got a hoop. So even if they lost that game, it's still like Wimby is Wimby. So if he, if he decides to like 
water his game down this last few weeks of the season to get some wins together, like. That's but I don't think I mean, I'm gonna say he has to water it down. Even the game against the Warriors that they lost, I think he had like 32 in that game. I think for yeah, him like now, I think at this point he should just be like, "F y'all!" Like, yeah. Clearly, what y'all got going on, we not even a playoff. So y'all have not been passing me the rock all season. So get it out the net. Move, right? I'm sure. How important is it for Wimby to learn how to win in the league this season? This season? This season to build to his future. I mean, like it's clear, man. Like I said, pop. The infamous jigsaw killer <laughs> is not fucking with Wimby to the extent of playing him a certain amount of minutes for him to actually have an impact on the team's winning and then having the team adjust to making him the focal point and then defensive schemes like doubling Jalen Brunson when he has fucking 40, 50 and then get him to 60, certain shit. Just, I'm just seeing a decline of air over there. Where if they don't make no adjustments, they're not going to be winning in the next four, five, six years. So it's important for him to want to win and learn how to win, but this season, that's out the window. It's just about stat padding at this point to make him look good and going into next season, which is unfortunate because I know he don't like playing like that. He just like the hoop. Yeah. And then just for everybody on the couch, how impressed, you know, before the season started, we gave our, you know, Best case scenarios for how Wimby will look this season, but how impressed have you been with, with now that you've actually got to see Wimby play yeah. the, the bulk of his rookie Super season? Super impressed. Did it At least once a game, I'm like, what the? F how did he do that? Like, what did I say he was going to average? I think uh, somewhere in the, the 20s, right? 18 to 20 range. He not gonna win MV or MVP. He not gonna win Rookie of the Year because they're so bad. No, he's. I think he's got that. Yeah, he's he's he that, got right? that locked. He should have that and Defensive Player of the Year. You think he should, should get the Defensive Player of the Year? <clears throat> because he's. They're ranked one when he's on the court, and they're ranked last when he's off the court. Which really? Yeah. <clears throat> which tells you how wow. great he is defensively. First to last. Wow. So what, what, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's not like there's this. Steady hold, like when he's on the court, they're ranked one. When he leaves, last place, which means him by himself is dictating the defense. Rudy, if he's not on the court, they're not dropping all the way to last because they have other defensive players. So you can't reward a guy who doesn't have that type of impact. Rudy on the court or off the court doesn't impact the game defensively. You can see one is impacting the game, right? Like, he is literally ranked, they're ranked one when he's on the court, last when he's off the court. Let you know his impact by himself is defensive player of the year. Has a rookie won that before? Defensive player of the year? Mm. Mm. Man, I don't know that. I don't think, maybe Dwight, did Dwight win it? I don't, I don't. The only person I could have won it put like Tim Duncan, maybe. That's what I was thinking about. I don't know. I don't know, like somebody like that. That's very impressive. Because that's usually the part where young players struggle is the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Um, he's super young. And so no rookies ever won the award, wow. no according rookies. to a quick Google search. But I think this should be the first time. This should be that the first. That would be so I fire. Mean, I, I mean, he deserves it. He does, that's what I said. He deserves it. He can't help that he's only playing 28, 29. He can't help that. That's, but when he's on the court, they're the best defensive team. In the league, if he played 40-something minutes, they would be ranked one. It says yeah. that. that You can't... Do you think the Spurs record will ultimately hurt It has to, nothing to do with this is defensive player of the I, year. I understand that, but I think from, from a square perspective, when you look at their record and say, oh, well, it doesn't equate to wins or whatever you're going to say. But, but, but when, look at that team. Was winning it, he was, yeah. it wasn't equi their record in Utah wasn't equating to no fucking... Yeah, but that's so what I'm saying. When but you look I'm at it... Is, but, but, look, I understand the argument of it's not equating to wins. I get that. But how can Rudy say he's the best defensive player when Ant-Man is a defensive player, Conley's a defensive player, when uh, Nas, Nas is a defensive like, player? When Rudy, when Rudy's coming, team his teammate, what, what are they ranked, one? In defense. They got a defender uh, almost at every position. Yeah. So they're ranked one. When Wimby's playing, they're ranked one. You see the difference? Yeah. Now when Rudy's going off, the, when he's out of the game, they don't go to last place. So that means if they're still ranked one or go to two when, no. when he's out of the game, 
and let you know they're they're structurally a better defensive all around team. So obviously they're going to win because they have offense, they have better defensive other players on the team. He's just one person. Yeah, for sure. He's just one person. So it's it's, it's no different than the scoring title, right? It's the same thing, right? If someone averages 36 and they win zero games, 36 points a game, he gets that award. Mm-hmm. This is an award. And then, it has nothing to do with wins. When you look at the history of defensive players of the year, it's about what it looked like the totality of that year. Like Ben Wallace, when he won multiple um, player of the years, Dwight Howard, when he won them, um, I think Dikembe won a couple. Mm-hmm. Like it's like how how it looks when you're out there playing defense and how it affects the other team's ability to score the ball. Even when he's on the perimeter, he's blocking perimeter shots. Mm-hmm. He's changing shots. Like that shit look different. He's young and athletic. Like Rudy don't have. He's getting older, so it's it's looking a little rusty for him. So for him to even think that he can get it over this dude. It's absurd. Just because if he wasn't there, would we give it to Rudy, hands well, down? No. If we, like if, who would be in the if, running if, saying, it, if Wimby wasn't here? Who would be in the running with Rudy to be like, all right, we're going to give it between you two? It's like, who? So he's used to being able to get it based on the fact that he's Rudy. But, that, but that's what I'm saying. You're getting a benefit of doubt because you're using team, you're using team wins in this isolated thing, right? Assist leader, an assist leader has no win total on it. Right. The block leader, the total rebounds leader, none of those are impacted by wins and losses. Right? A defensive player of the year, it, it's his metrics by himself. That is the point of it. It's not a, it's not a team right. thing. Yeah. But Rudy is hiding behind other team defenses. So that's kind of, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Like when Kawhi won it, like Ron Artest won it, when Ron won it, it wasn't no, there was no, no team thing. That, that's what I said. There's, there's just guys sometimes in the league, they are just great at defense. Yep, for sure. They're single-handedly great at defense. So you can't, you can't, you know, you have to reward them for what they're doing. You can't penalize them because it's not leading to wins. Yeah. That's not his fault. Yeah, that's like so, every so matchup. Go, go Bear and Wimby like are two front runners right now. AD's in the mix as well. But yeah. I think AD's in front of Rudy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sure. AD, that's what AD is. These are individual guys. You don't have, I mean, who's another defensive player on, on Lakers? Mm. <laughs> Prince, maybe. Say Prince. Prince. Prince? Mm-hmm. Probably there. Because he used to play, he used to play in the I mean, like, I, I just, I, I just said, like, like the Tony really Allens, those Tony Allens, they, they stand alone. There's yeah. just some guys who can affect the game by themselves. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. yep. And, and, and Wimby is that dude. For sure. Well, speaking of AD, let's talk about these Lakers a little bit. Uh, hold Woo! You know, the smoke You see, it working now. It worked. It worked now. The ah! smoke machine worked. Uh, just didn't work for the, uh, the women. Shut women's. up. <laughs> work for the women's game. Oh, you, you, Gil, you pressed the other button. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't, 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 don't fool the people. I think it's so slick. You caught that? I think it's so slick. It ain't working for the women. You go out your way, shut up. This motherfucker right here. My bad. My bad. Thank you. He is different. Gil is being a villain. Gil is being a villain in a sick, twisted way of getting more people to watch a women's game. He, he, he's shouldering that burden. Jeez. Appreciate you. Yeah. Got a whole daughter. I know how good my whole daughter order. Order. Go play. He knows if he goes that route, he'll get a I ton mean, of backlash really, and he'll help grow the game. What's good is there's two French guys, you know, going at it. You know what I mean? Mm. That's good there. <laughs> uh, two Frenchies. No Diddy. Two Frenchies. Have a little French slap off. <laughs> French slap off. <laughs> French slap off. Please. It, it's hard to do a show every day. I wish y'all out there really understood what I have to go through every day just to bring y'all Gil's Arena presented by Underdog our fantasy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So Lakers are holding down the ninth seat, but looking to move up the standings. LeBron is doing his best to keep them trending in the right direction. So LeBron gave the Nets a 40 piece, going nine for ten from three. Crazy. Which matches his career high makes from long range. This is wild, man. Look at I'm, this man's 39 years old. 39. Damn. What the hell? Hairline holding on for dear life. Janky ankle. Jesus. Still cooking. Where's the move? So, like I said, he dropped 40 in the game to go along with seven boards, five dimes, and Lakers win. It's Bron's second 40 point game yep, since turning yep. 39. Who? Oh, second wow. most. Wow. Ah! Wow. That was crazy. Who feet he got? 
39. So LeBron's second 40-point game since turning 39, which is second most in NBA history behind MJ's three. Uh, he's also shooting a career-high 41.6% from three, up nearly 7% from last season. Lakers are 3-1. and one. Damn. I know, yeah. that's right, I mean, Brian. that shit is wild. Lakers are 3-1 and one on this six-game road trip with a back-to-back -back against the Raptors and Wizards left so far, so on good. the schedule. <laughs> is LeBron officially in playoff mode? Gil, you predicted 5-1 and one on the road trip. They're currently 3-1 and one with two games remaining. 5-1, and 4-2. and two. Right now we're handling business. Playoff mode? I'm proud, right? I mean, you know. Yeah, ask him to do any more than what he's doing. <coughs> I mean, it's, it's not about, listen, it's not about is he in playoff mode, right? Is everybody else in playoff mm -hmm. mode? It's everybody else. Like, we know what LeBron's going to give us. That's not ever been an issue, right? He's going to show up. Um, we just need everybody else to be dialed in. Um, everybody's confidence is high. This is not when we need relapses, trying to figure out where we stand with the team. Like, if you don't know where you are on the team as of now, then they shouldn't be put in the game. There are two, two bench points. How much? Two. And we didn't need them. We didn't need them. Did they play? Yes. How many minutes? The whole bench almost got, everybody from the bench got in. They, they, see, that's right there. Two right points. There. Right there, they, they shouldn't get in. That, that's what, right there. We don't need that in the playoffs. We don't need you to come in for cardio. We don't need cardio players in the playoffs. <laughs> we do not need nobody in here just doing exercising. All right, you can do that shit on the treadmill yeah, or the little bike behind Two the points bench. points off the bench. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to win any playoff series like I know. that. Facts. You're playing against Brooklyn. Uh, 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 that's when you're Former supposed to have. Right, that's that's when you're supposed, supposed to have 30 bench points. Two? And who scored it? Gabe. Gabe who? It's Gabe Vincent was back. The one who there. hasn't played <laughs> in months. Is the he on the team still? He has risen, Gil. We didn't send his ass back to oh, South. He has <laughs> risen. Oh, I thought He's we back sent... to help. He has risen. See, he helped more than anybody else off the bench. He had two points. And Probably the rest two free throws. Zero. Did he have a basket or free throw? A basket. Oh, he had a basket? Okay. A powerful basket, good. Mm. No, that's oh, crazy. Powerful. Two points off the bench. So Gabe Vincent back. All right, okay. That's unheard of. Rashad, are you ready to? Two points. Where, where, hey, is Wood still? Is he still outside with the shovel? He's still outside. Where the, with fuck is, where the fuck is he at? He's still outside. He's still outside with the shovel trying to. Absolutely. <laughs> I get in. <laughs> He's still out here trying to uh, uh, serve the goddamn baby mama. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's heard about other things. Oh, uh, damn. All right, because I ain't seen him lately. Is he hurt? He is hurt, guys. His feelings? Yeah. No, his body. Oh, okay, his body hurt? Jackson Hayes body hurt weird. too, right? How the hell you can't find uh, your, your bitch? <laughs> I don't know what kind of P.I. you got, got there. That's bad P.I. <laughs> Trip. Hit the fire alarm, motherfucker. Shit. Nah, <laughs> Do something. I'm iron. Come out of here, God damn it. <laughs> You better bring your ass out of here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. What kind of... Throw, throw some mice or something all up in the house. Something. Break a window. Throw the rollings in there. Come out. Oh, they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't really dedicated to that serving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't know serving like I know serving. I ain't got nothing to say about the Lakers, so you can go, go ahead. We, we, we need, we need your student opinion. Nothing. No, he ain't They're got not nothing. Getting to the sixth Anything though. positive to say about LeBron dropping Why a 40 you, piece of 39? I know it's the, it's the Lakers. We talking about the Lakers. That's all I hear is... The basketball team in the oh, national. That's all I just keep hearing. Basketball like, Late. I just you, keep hearing... But when you was a Laker fan, that's all you heard. You didn't care. Yeah, but I'm not a Laker fan anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what will it take to bring you back? What will it take to bring you back? I'm just saying. When are we going to get you back as a Laker fan? I don't know, Never. Man. Once you retire. Once you retire, you're going to come, come back? I might. It depends on who you pick up. <laughs> I'm not a fan anymore. You pick up, man. Yeah. Oh, you can't. Once know. this stage is over. I don't know that Laker fan. Get, don't get this stage over with. You know what I'm saying? So, so speaking of this stage, uh, after the game, LeBron. Uh, you know, speaking of that. When LeBron retires, what, who are you, who are you going to be a fan of? Okay, I'm just going to travel the globe. You're going back to Milwaukee? Are you going to be a Bucks fan? I'm just going to travel the globe. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. 
Oh, he's gonna be like Justin the boy. He's gonna be with LeBron. He's gonna be with LeBron. He's gonna go to the Vegas. He's gonna be a Vegas. What post? What we post? He's gonna be a Vegas team. He's gonna be a Vegas team. No, good now. He's gonna be on the Vegas side. Fan of Los Angeles. Okay. He's gonna join the pie. He's gonna go to college. He's gonna go to college. Like I know what's coming, but it's still like crazy to think about. What? That would be good news. I'm saying. I'm Hey, hey, come on, Josiah. Come on, join the pie, man. Me, you, JJ. What's we the nail, you. Brian? What's the nail? Okay. Oh, wait. So there's what's seven, the nail? There's the definition. <laughs> I know there was a lot of people listening to that, and they were like, what the fuck is a nail? Like, so many people. But if they listen, if we start breaking the shit down a little bit more, they would be prepared for them comments. No, but you guys, I mean... Because we do be breaking it down, but they, they, just don't, don't, be, understand they don't understand what we be saying either. This is what I've always been curious. Is there a nail on NBA courses? Yes. Okay. Just, it's the nail is the, the, the middle it's of the... the free throw line. If, you, if you're any type of basketball player... If you right hand it, your right foot and toe should be on the nail. Every time. Shooting free throws. On the percent. It is the nail that goes even down the middle of the rim. It splits, it's Pretty right much. in the middle. Every basketball court Every basketball around, court. around besides, out, besides outside basketball. Yeah. They need the nail. Yeah. 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 Just no, spray I'll put paint. It there. But the nail is where you, when, when someone says get to the nail, that's where they're telling to get to. It's the middle. So of when, the floor. When, when someone's trying to drive, it's the middle of the floor. Yeah. yeah. Right foot on the nail. I like, I like, I like what, listen, listen, I like what they're doing. I think they need to show, that's what free game is for, that we're going to be showing exactly what we're doing. They kind of beat us to the punch. I even, I even texted him and said, hey, you're doing the same thing that we was doing. We've, we've had this in the work for, for but the many, problem, many But the now. problem is he can probably get foot, he can get licensed footage. So it's one of those things where it's, we would have to do steal, yeah. steal, steal. And we should, like I was saying when we, last season, like if we just go upstairs and be like, all right, let's give this scenario down here, they play the little clip, freeze it, yeah. but we wouldn't be able to do it simultaneously upstairs and downstairs. No, it's something we'll have to do uh, uh, a tape. Tape to show. Tape to show it. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. But we have been working on this for a while. As you, always, as you know, at Gills Arena, we're always innovating, trying to raise the bar, mm -hmm. stay employed, most importantly. But uh, so let's talk a little bit more about LeBron. So after the game, LeBron was asked how much time in the league he thinks he has left and had this to say. Not very long. Not very long. Um, I'm on the other side, obviously at a hill, so uh, I'm not going to play another 21 years. That's for damn sure. But uh, not very long. Um, I don't know what, uh, when that door will close as far as my, when I'll retire, but I don't have much time left. So it seems like we talk about this a lot. He said nothing. Cause duh. He said the obvious. <laughs> he said the obvious. Not a lot of time. We know, bro. You're 21. <laughs> yeah. but we not a lot of time. But we know. know. Hey, he said, I know it's not going to be another 21 years. <laughs> it could be. Anything is possible. Not a lot. When you put your faith. Oh, that's our Lord so and Nah. So LeBron's averaging more than 25 points per game for the 20th straight season <laughs> of his career. 20 straight seasons. Is that impressive, Rashad? Excuse me. Is that impressive? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Listen, admit it. I'm, 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 listen, Say 25 it. points per game for 20 straight seasons? My knees hurt, man. Okay. Just My knees hurt as well. I get it. About it. Okay. I don't, I don't I, understand I, how this is still happening. Why are we still talking about this? Because. <laughs> My knees hurt. Just, just like any any player, Brady, when you're, when you're done, the one thing that we always are thinking about is I had one more, two more years, right? Because most people who, who retired, they didn't retire on their own terms, right? They trained that summer and no one picked their ass up, right? That's how 90-some percent of athletes figured out they was done, right? When the game didn't call you no more. So and most of all those players still had more in the tank and they wish they could have, you know, finished the way they wanted to. So... Let him be done when he's done, right? You know, because there's a bunch of us that still wish we played, right? You got Dwight Howard, you got cousins that still wish they had one more year. Let me get one more year out of it. So they mentally can be satisfied because when you're done and you feel like you still have something left to the game, you're eating up inside. That's the fucked up part about it, what you just said. 
those dudes don't have a choice but to have that type of mentality of saying, I got a couple more years, mm -hmm. but they won't let me fucking play. Yeah. But this nigga don't got that opportunity. He, they, this LeBron. Mm -hmm. We gonna let you play because it's you. Not because you can play or you can't affect the game. I feel like the game should have elevated and evolved to the point where the competitiveness should have pushed him out. Right. Because we discompetitive. <laughs> we, we, we hacking Old you. We shit. fouling you. You Old older. Yeah. Like, like, the game is moving at a pace and we're jumping and moving where you just like, yo, these niggas is really out here. Moving at a pace, I don't really want to. But I feel like they are. They He's not. just matching it. They not. Like, like, Te like Jeff T, when Jeff T said, yeah, I'm sitting there chasing DeAndre Fox, and he blew past me, and I'm like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm done. When, I, I know in reality, he, did he ever get hurt hurt? Who? LeBron? He? Jeff. Jeff. No. Nope. No. See, so someone like that, if he really mentally He could lock to, back in. He would have still been playing. Hell yeah. I, but probably not in the role that he would have been happy in, maybe. Yeah, but... but the, the, those roles is to be something else, we have to do something else. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure mentally and physically, I don't know if he was ready to really, really do something that he probably didn't do. Right? I remember when um, I, we listened to J.J. Reddick. J.J. Reddick was talking about he has a certain routine he does every day in the summer. And he says when it was time for him to do it, he said, yeah, I don't want to do this. He didn't want to go through his summer routine. He said, yeah, I could have said, yeah, worked out and did normal workout and then went back to the He said, but I wouldn't have been happy with myself. This is the routine that got me prepared for every season, and yeah, I, I didn't want to do it. Want to do no it. Same, I think, yeah. uh, didn't uh, KG did the same thing? It was like KG or Sam Cassell. They went into the summer. I was like, I don't feel like doing no beach runs. I don't feel like doing parachute shit, man. I'm going to be done. Mm. Know what I mean? So I, I would like everybody to finish when they're done so they can, when they're done playing, they can have a better retirement. But when you're chasing something, it pushes you. All right? Yeah. So to me, Brian was obviously chasing something. Mm -hmm. And when you're chasing something at that level, there's nothing that's going to stop you from getting there because it's gonna set you so far apart from everybody that there's no more conversation. So that push alone is like, yeah, man, if I could get to 22, 23, and y'all not in my way, this is smooth fucking sailing. There's no one in his way. And that's the problem what I have is that no one wants to be in his way. I think Ant-Man could wanna be in his way if he actually said like, I can be in his way from stopping him from getting this type of stuff or slowing him down. Cool. But someone should have tried to get in his way a few years do, do ago. You, but do you, think that's, do you think that's the key, though, for everyone, right? Set, set a goal for yourselves, right? Set a goal for yourselves, right? Like, okay, LeBron's goal was to break this record, right? We can just assume. We don't yeah, know. Yeah. But, yeah, his goal was to break this record or get 40,000. Maybe his goal right now is 45,000, right, right? Right, So that's going to push him to stay, yep. to get that. Motivated. Wouldn't that, that should be for all of us then, yep. right? Even though 40,000 might not be in our future, if we're at 8,000, I want to get to 20,000. So right. every summer I'm going into, 20,000 points is in my reach, yep. which makes me go an extra couple of years. I guess that's what we. Sh I think that's what we're probably missing. That we don't. But, but think about the white and his like. If he was chasing the rebound record, yeah. that's cut short because it's out of his control. Or Rondo chasing the assist record, that's cut short because oh, I can't find a team that wants me to play. Like you just said, Jeff T. Mm -hmm. Knowing you can play another couple years, four or five years, but the JJ Redick shit. I don't want to wake up and go through my regiment. That's a discipline thing. But, th but that's what I'm saying. Do you think because they wasn't chasing nothing, they wasn't disciplined? 100%. When, okay, so that's, 100%. that's more the player himself. Yes. Because Cole, when he got hurt with the Achilles thing, he made the Facebook post like, damn, this shit, should I sit out? Should I do this? But the one thing that pushed him was like, nah, I'm not going to let this take me out. Yeah. I'm not gonna let this injury take me. I'm gonna actually push back. I'm gonna come back to try to be another finish. shell of myself and finish to prove you. that. That's another push for you, just yep. to prove I can get back. But a lot of guys don't got that mentality where it's like, I got something to prove. If you wake up and you say, I don't wanna do some shit that you're used to doing, that's a passion of yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've given And it's you've gonna feel up. different because you do wake up some mornings and you're like, man, you I don't, don't wanna do it. Yeah. 
But probably the feeling that JJ had was like he probably just felt it. That, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. this is a different type of I don't feel like doing this. Yeah. Like I mean, but this could, is what we've been doing all our lives. Yeah. So we've had days like that, like but I'm fucking go, tired. I'm but I gotta go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but when, when you're when like, you, mm, I don't really gotta go today, that's when you start realizing like, hmm. That's the thing. The I don't gotta go. Yeah. I got the bread. Yeah. I got the house. My family's cool. What's really but, pushing but, me? But now? That's what I said. It's, it has to be a goal that's set for us individually. Like we have to keep re-goaling ourselves so we can keep going into the summer with the preparation yeah. of. Because you know, once you get out of shape a little bit, having fun, and then that time is coming, you be like. And your goals can change too. Yeah. Yeah. As I long think, as you want to get them, like last people, yeah. People last can year. apply that to their everyday life too, though. No I'm saying like. But people have goals, I'm gonna do this, that, whatever. But anybody can do the work when they feel like doing yeah. the work, right? Yeah. Anybody goals, can work that's hard. That's always been the key. Your yeah. goals can when, change, they're still yeah. your goals. And seven days a week, you wanna do stuff three days a week. Yes. You don't wanna do it three days a week, and one day is like 50 50. If you start it, you'll do it. But there's three days out of the week that you don't wanna do something. So those are the days that's the most important. Yeah. The days you don't want to do something is the most important days to gain and stuff. Yeah. That's so. like Mondays through Thursdays for me from 11.30 a.m. to <laughs> Self-motivation, though. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm tired of seeing y'all, though. Yeah. Like, I hit Joe I hit Joe 6 in the morning. What? <laughs> like, you sleep? No, the, yeah, yeah. the problem is you hit me and I can't call you back. Uh, so yeah. now we gotta, I got to text uh, you, but I'm by the phone now because I know I can't call you because you don't take incoming phone calls. I, I, be for, I be forgetting that I wake up so early that I be up for a while and I'm like, okay, everybody's up. That's why I That's text. I, I said, up. yeah, Rashad, I text this morning like, <laughs> Rashad going to be mad. <laughs> and then I looked at the time, I erased it. Like, oh, shit, <laughs> these motherfuckers ain't up right now. <laughs> and I've seen that. But it's like that self-motivation thing, though, like, it's New Year. I mean, to me, it's New Year's. Today's New Year's to me. Mm. Uh, you know, April 1st is a whole new element of goal setting, right? And remember I told y'all, I, I didn't set goals after the NBA because there was nothing else that I feel like I needed to achieve. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now it's, all right, 500 push-ups, sit-ups. When I wake up, go to bed. I want to eat this for the rest of the month. I'm going to see if I can accomplish this thing and discipline myself to do this for 30 days. Mm. And if I can, I know I can do it. I'm setting my mind to say, all right, I'm mentally prepared to make these next moves with discipline and goal setting. And I think when you're trying to prepare the next generation, you got to be an example of something that can be, you know, of discipline. And if I'm going to give jewels to the next generation, I got to be an example of that. So I want to set myself up to, to accomplish goals. And teaching, you know, my nephew, my, my younger sister, whoever it is around me, like, nah, you can do it. I just did it. I just lost a certain amount of pounds. I just, mm -hmm. I just gained a certain amount of muscle. Mm -hmm. You know, I only eat this, and I feel this type of way. So I think um, being an example of that, LeBron is being an example of that. Goal setting, pushing yourself to the limits, regardless of how we feel about how he's doing it. <laughs> you know, it's being done. And he's, he's showing the resilience of Father Time, which is impressive. Mm -hmm. I think that's highly fucking impressive, 40 years old. Like I said, my knees hurt watching this nigga jump and dunk <laughs> and not it's show crazy. any kind of, you just, you, I'm icing all night, all day. You, after coming up some steps. <laughs> like, sheesh, boy, you do, you, this 82 games, how many he done played? So we talk about self-discipline a lot, right? You know, you got the LeBrons, the MJs, the Kobe's, those guys that can stick to a routine. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Kobe video, I'm working out four or five times a day because I know everybody else only working out twice. So after five years, you won't be able to catch me. But for you guys in particular, what was the moment when you had that kind of J.J. Reddick moment where it was like, I just, I don't feel like doing this shit anymore and I can't cheat the game? I, what's so funny is, um, I, know I, was more, I, was, I was disciplined when I played. I wasn't disciplined in, in rehab. I didn't know, I didn't know it's- It was your first time. I, yeah, it was my first time. Like I was, I didn't know how serious injuries were, right? I, when I broke my hand, uh, I cut the cast off, you know, two weeks early to play. Mm. I didn't get, you know what I mean? Um, so like, I, I thought it was the same, since even now, I don't have enough discipline to sit 30. I don't, I don't even have enough discipline for my injury to stretch for 30 minutes. Right. Tidget span. 
I'm gonna sit, and that's what it is. Detail is about being boring. You yep. can't be like I can sit there and shoot for hours on a time. This is not dribble for to you. hours. It's not boring, right? Stretching. Hey, Fifteen minutes, or I'm like, oh my god, ADD kicks in for sure. <laughs> yes, like I, you know what I mean. Like even with, with the bike, right? You know, I have the Peloton. I can't do the Peloton. Thirty minutes is probably my max. Yep. Right now, if you put me on a road bike, I can go twenty miles and twenty miles back. Yeah. Because I got my music. I'm seeing different shit. I'm yeah. going, moving. Right. You're forced. Then to I'm yeah, stopped, yeah. and then when I get there, then I'm forced to come back. So I double the t- Peloton. Sitting there and be like. Man, what's on TV? I'm watching TV right here. What's on TV upstairs? upstairs. <laughs> what's on TV upstairs? <laughs> and now I want to go upstairs. That's crazy. That's fucking, I'm, so discipline is the most important thing with anything. So you need discipline in every piece of your life. Right, I'm like, so you starting today? Yeah. What's your, that's good. What's your discipline? Come on. Um, I've been very disciplined since I've been a kid. So like my parents, I've like always had goals, like weekly goals. What's your goals? What's your goals this season? My goals this season? Yeah. Well, yeah. one is... That. Yeah. My first goal is to stay healthy. Uh-huh. And for me, that kind of goes against the, how I usually prepare and exercise and train because I can't overwork myself as much anymore. Mm-hmm. So now it's like listening to my body but still getting all the work that I need to feel prepared to play at a high level. So finding that balance is going to be difficult, but... Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm prepared for it. I played well in Dallas, like balancing rest and extra work. I want to be an all-star. Um, one of the best three-point shooters in the league. Um, yeah, and get the Sparks to the playoffs. I mean, championship obviously is something that you want to do, but we haven't been to the playoffs in like four years or something, even what before you, I got there. What do you think the biggest obstacle for reaching that goal is? Because we always see... That the goal is there, but like there's the obstacles. It's like, all right, there's always playing obstacles. time. There's a, somebody's in front of me. Um, yeah. Like you say, the injury, like yeah. whatever the injury was, is it going to be a reoccurring thing? You don't want to yeah. think about those things, but those are the roadblocks. Yeah. That, that are here. I mean, for me personally, yeah, just my health, just not really knowing how my body's going to respond to the grind of a season. So it doesn't concern me, but it's something that's in the back of my mind that I'm going to have to handle throughout the summer. Um, and as far as like playoffs, like just organi- from the organization standpoint, like we don't have a, our own practice spot. We don't have the gym when we need it. Who so y'all y'all like the Clippers or the WNBA? I mean, not, we're not the only team mm-hmm. like that, but yeah, basically. And that's not shitting on the Sparks organization because they're working on it, and I appreciate the work that they have been doing. But you look at a bunch of other teams around the league. Having their own practice spots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it changed, matters. Yeah, it changes because you can go in there anytime you want. You can go want. in whenever you want. You can call up your coaches and be like, yo, we need to go get this workout in real quick. I need to come in early. I can stay late. I can go lift whenever I want. Yeah, big difference. So that's, I mean, that's a huge difference, in my opinion, for someone that is a gym rat. So if you don't have that access, where is your access? Is you got to find your own gym? Yeah. That's fucking crazy because mm-hmm. it's hard to find. So if you're restless at night, like 2, 3 in the morning, Usually you would just go to the gym as a hooper. Yeah, I mean that's what I did in college. Yeah, so what Sometimes you do I would go out yeah. and go find myself in the gym after yeah. being out. Yeah. Like yeah, hundred percent. Now it's you just, now sit there with I'm just your like dang, or maybe I'll go like to the like gym in the apartment and maybe like go on the elliptical or treadmill or do yeah. a workout yeah. like that. But like as far as just going to get like two hundred shots, what well, that takes what thirty minutes maybe. And you by yourself. By yourself, Man. blast the music like. That's why I played so well in college. I thought, like, I just was able to go to the gym whenever I felt like it, and I don't have Get that on luxury. the gun. Yeah. Good. But it's coming. I know it is. Yeah, I'm um, going to have abs this year. Hmm? This summer, I'm going to have abs. You're going to have abs? Yep. Okay. That's my goal. I'm now, you abs. trimmed down a lot from last year. Yeah, I'm going to have abs. Uh, surgery, I'm going to get surgery. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get surgery next month. So I can, do no look, sit-ups. So look, you can, still be, crazy. you can still be fat. And then yeah, I see Big Sean with him. I'm getting the Big Sean joints. Yeah. yeah. I'm Y'all. Always ruin a nice I'm going to have fat abs, baby. Fat abs. <laughs> fat abs. Out of shape with the abs. Fat Love abs. handles all right here. It's just Pick the cow. Pick the cow. <laughs> fat Albert. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy? Yes, that's my goal. That's have good. abs. It's by any means. Look, Joe, Joe. 
We getting no Yo, me and you, like, me and you can get the same yeah. ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you come home. We'll be like, big like, shot and drink. We'll be like, ooh, you been working now. <laughs> oh. Touch the front, not the sides. Touch the front. <laughs> <Both sides. laughs> and if you walk in with some. Plastic surgery abs, girl. I did three sit-ups this week. <laughs> trust me, I, I don't Yuck. care. Yuck. <laughs> Yuck. Everything can be see-through. Be sitting right here. I be holding it just like this, just so you can see this no, part. Man, six points. Yeah, just six, six points. points. Don't see the sides. <laughs> you got to get the angles. If you just get the angles, <laughs> if you get the angles, right, I'm sure you guys are seeing the angles. <laughs> It was like, wait a minute, those, those angles were angling. It's the light, you got uh, yeah, shoot, shoot it from the top or something. Yeah. Like his body looked like that two weeks ago. I think the moral of the story though is everybody have goals, but don't be lazy. Actually execute them, right? Yep. If you're saying your goals and not doing them, writing them down helps too. Going to the gym right after this. That self discipline is very difficult, mm -hmm. but keep it. Yeah, see, you already know. Mm -hmm. But let's keep it moving. I got to talk a little bit about Luca before the Mavs Rockets game even started. There was some Luca magic. I don't know if you guys have seen this trick shot. He threw it off the jumbotron, off the glass. Oh, that's crazy! Wow, bucket. <laughs> what arena was that in? The uh, Houston? Oh uh, yeah, Toyota Center. I didn't even think that. Houston. Watch it one more time. Boop. How many tries? Who gonna pay for that jumbotron? Hell yeah, the cousin's ass. I don't be <laughs> shooting at my goddamn jumbotron. <laughs> my friend, ain't funny. <laughs> walks back to the line casually. Yeah, he was doing that before the game. He yeah. was practicing that shit. Who thinks of that shit? <laughs> <laughs> so, Luca followed that up by cooking the Rockets in the actual game. So, Luca dropped 22 points in the first quarter. Bam. Damn. <laughs> Finished the game with 47 points. Mm. Jesus. 12 rebounds. Take a look at that a seven assists. Luka operating in the yeah, Jacques Lande on the torture <laughs> chamber. <laughs> Oh my oh God! My goodness. See if he can move like that on offense, he can move like that on defense. Ah! Where are we going? So Luca with that 47. That oh wow! You yeah. Oh yeah. hell no! <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Oh no! I'm there's sorry. There's nothing on you the can do about that. Line? Oh my! I'm oh. sorry. What, what, how do you guard that? You on can't. the three point line? You can't guard that. That's a tough shot. If you do hit that on, you got to fight. Man, That's I'm the rules. Fouling. I'm fouling you, bro. No, no. So the, the Mavs win, snapped the Rockets, 11 game era. winning streak. <laughs> You'd have this been era's so it. fun, bro. You'd have been trying some. Me getting this, I don't got to pass it? No. My mom, work, work, work. Work, 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 work. Whatever. What the, <laughs> like, I was, you know what, I'm not even going to lie. I was still trying to figure out how to throw it off the backboard, but because I wasn't as tall as everybody else, and throwing it to someone still, I'd have been mad because yeah. I, I could have just shot that mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, he having yeah, fun. Not passing to the team. Coach not saying nothing. No, coach not saying nothing. What Jason Kidd gonna say? How? How? What you mean? <laughs> so, so, so what? what? Luca going right to a Mark Cube. I need a sub head coach. Sub after that <laughs> sub shot. Sub head coach. Oh yeah. If he would airball that. Nah, they're up thirty. I would have airballed that because that wouldn't be something I practice. That looked like he practiced. Points have at, at that point in the game. <laughs> somebody, oh, in the, no, somebody in the chat said Luca's racist for that. Yeah. <laughs> For a lot he of definitely things, said, man. nigga, get off me. He said, nigga, get off me. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, get off me, nigga. But yeah, that would have been some shit he said. Yeah. So, get off me. How does Luca? Man, that's... How does Luca? Uh, 24, 24, I don't know. Oh, no. That's nice. I'm not even Keep the Google. Yeah, he just it don't even care what his Yeah, that's just nice. So, Luca name been mentioned heavily in the MVP race. Seems like it's, it's Joker's award to lose, but does Luca have... Joker's any? award? I thought, I thought it was that's SGA's. Nice. Definitely not joking. I was literally thinking about it last night. I was like, who? I don't know who's going to win the MVP. Based on how they be voting, it don't really make any sense. That's, so, like, there's no metrics to even... Now, you guys have been guess. heavy on the SGA train long before uh, conventional media jumped aboard. Yeah. I think so you think it's still MVP. SGA to lose? Yes. Hell yeah. I'm sorry. There's, Where they at? They're right Second? above Denver. Second? If Denver happens to a team, the youngest team in the NBA, they're they're the, they're the age of a college they're, team. They're first right now. So what I'm saying is they're the age of a college yeah, I'm team. I'm like, why would you not give it to SG? Yeah, age of a college team. No super, no other NBA All Star on the team. Not even a capable All Star on the team, right? Everybody is still immature playing wise. No one has any experience. 
Who's and they're second one? or first in the NBA because of because one man of and one man only. That is the MVP. The most valuable player to his team and right now in the league. Joker, I'm sorry. You, you've won two. Right? You won two. You, t- you won a championship. What have you done this year that stood out? Nothing. Nope. You haven't done anything to stand out. You've been consistent. You haven't even you haven't even taken over the NBA. Like you, you're not. It's not like you you lost it last year and you came back and you did it in bead. Yeah. You're putting up in bead numbers. Right. Right. In bead won it last year. Everybody said, ah. Yeah, he came. Fluke, that was phony. Fluke, fluke shit. Fluke shit. And he came back destroying. Yes. Right. You're just playing normal basketball. Yep. So Jokic averaging 26, 12, and 9 assists. Which this is, is crazy that that's I'm, normal basketball. Normal basketball. Normal basketball. Normal basketball. Normal. But that's why I was but what I'm saying two is, MVPs. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is what has, he, what has stood out this right, year for? Right They're just playing great basketball. The team, they've been playing great team basketball. That's it. That's and then it. SGA averaging 30.6 assists, 6 rebounds. Yeah, like. Game. It's SGA. Is Shooting 54% from the field. What I'm saying is what, what, where, what stat is holding Joker over? What part of the stat? Nothing. He's the only defensive player in. The SGA, SGA is in top 10, top 15 in defense. What's the None of the other ones. What's Joker's shooting percentage? So SGA, 54% from the field, wow. 37 from three, 87 from the free throw line. Jokic, Jokic is at 58% field goal percentage, 35 from three. 82%. But he's almost 60. He's a, he's a big man. One's a guard. But 30, 60% for, three, for a big man is 35 and 3, one's 37 percent 54% from, from a guard. Or is, is it dumb? 54 it's, huh? from, That's insane. 54% from a from guard? No, it's 56. And how much? Yogi's no, 57. Yogi's 57. How much three-pointer from SGA? Uh, I think 36. 37. 37? Yeah, we'll Wait, so 54 ex- is 37. his overall field goal percentage? Yeah, so he's showing shooting, again, uh, 54% from the field, close to 37% so from how three. how high is his two-point percentage? That's he's got to be high. Like, like That's what I'm saying. He's, he's high as yeah. shit. It just, it's just, and he's shooting 87% from the free, free, throw, free throw line. Yeah, so if he's shooting 37 from three, saying, you, then you, his three like, point percentage is mad high. The, 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 like they have to... Hmm? Shea? Yeah. Shea. 58 from two. 58 from, 58 from two. That's, That's Tony Parker. Crazy. But, I'm, but what I'm saying is they have to factor in the team. Right. <laughs> The team is not champions this year. This year they're not I mean, champions. Okay. They're last What's year champions. There's no ch- future all-star. Every year the huh? category is uh, Williams. He's a future all-star team. Jalen Williams. Maybe. Yeah, he has the potential. I think he's a future all-star. Scotty Barnes can get there. And but, so is but, Chet. But what I'm saying is, but not right now, right? But, the, not but, this but year. what I'm but saying they is, the they, they are the most inexperienced out of the group. Yeah. Like if yeah. we said experience, the starting five for Denver. Will be first. I mean, and even it'll be them five, these, and then what? Shea. Yeah, but even all of these arguments, OKC still number one. So. Yeah, so they're still. And if we have <laughs> prioritized winning, team. like like it's been an important part right. of the category in, in previous years. Team. I got I got in the, like, in the I, West. I got Shea, Shea, Luca, Shea, Luca, then Jokic. Jokic Jokic wouldn't be in the top three. What's the bronze numbers? LeBron this season. Last. Think you would put him last? I feel like yeah. if MB was healthy still, Jokic. LeBron's averaging 25, three eight assists, seven rebounds, shooting Man. 53% from the field. Hey, listen. 42% from if three. They were a little better. Listen. <laughs> listen to me very carefully. If they were one. The fact that he has those numbers and then Joker's numbers are 25, 12, 26, nine. 12, and yeah. And, it's, and it's, we talking records? And if, the, if, if the Lakers were 4 or 5 right now? If, if the Lakers was like 2, 1, they'd be giving it to LeBron. A hundred, sure. But I'm saying if he was 4 or 5, you would have to put him in the conversation. You'd be in the common conversation. You know what I'm saying? Just because of those numbers are yeah. crazy. And he had... And then, he's at, where's Tatum at? Let's just look at Luka. Luka's averaging Tatum 34 points, not. 10 assists, 9 rebounds. Mm-hmm. 10 assists, 9 mm-hmm. rebounds. Wait. Wait, that's Luca's numbers. Luca's number 30, 34 and 10. So he's doing the same. He's doing the same. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He's doing the same thing as Jokic, Jokic but, but they have Jokic scoring. in front. He's doing more like Embiid. 34, 10, and he got nine. More points. So yeah. So it's SGA. Yeah, SGA Luka, is a, is a, if, if they don't give it to SGA, just I, I will get throw rid the of, whole award. I will get rid of everyone who's voting because obviously they're not counter. They're, they're not factoring anything because the defensive side too. In um, 
SGA is the only one on the list. Yeah, he's playing and both sides of the floor. He's both playing both sides of the floor. What's Tatum's numbers? So Tatum, glad you asked, Rashad. I said he was going to win MVP. Going to be fingers. 27, 8 rebounds, 5 assists. I like Shooting 47% it. from the field, 38% from the three. Numbers. But so it would, to me, it would be, I would take those numbers Joker four. Good. I would put Tatum three. I put Tatum. So three. SJ, Luka, Tatum, Tatum Jokic. Joker, yeah. And if Embiid was still yeah, playing, it feels like Tatum, Tatum would be one. Wouldn't even be. Tatum gets dinged because he's got probably the best roster. He has the best roster. I mean, but, uh, for he has the, but I said he has the best roster. But they, their roster is showing that they're the best roster. They're not like one, right? Yeah, it's not like I they're lost. playing. It's not like they're <laughs> under under man. Exactly, exactly. But it's kind of a no-win situation in that regard, right? Like, I mean, Denver should be the same. They should damn near have the same record as. I like, mean, they should be treating Jokic how they treat Steph. Tatum. No, oh. how they how they treated Steph. When he was number one team and... Right, when he won back-to-back -back MVP. He won an MVP, won a championship. That very next year, he dominated the game. Yep, yep. Yeah. He dominated. It was not a close debate. He was out there sleeping. Oh, so this just before just he was Jokic. sleeping with the handshake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was sleeping on the bench just... <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you said Jokic should be getting that same treatment? Huh? That's what you're saying? Jokic should be getting that same treatment. Jokic should get the treatment. He should get the treatment of... Who they were last year, beating people. They got the same starting five back. Yeah. Right? What are they doing this year? And they yeah. should have been doing the same. How Steph was treated, they came back 33, uh, 73 and 9. That's how Denver should have looked this year. Yeah. The fact that they can play the same type of basketball, nobody pays attention, and he puts up the same numbers with the same, medi not mediocre, but same technical dominance. Yeah. But you didn't give us no... Of yep. in your per, your performance or your team dominance. But do you think, I mean, he, he's kind of said this repeatedly. Do you think he cares? No, it don't matter if, if he don't care. But, I, I, okay, you don't care. Neither should the voters. Fair point. Right, the voters yeah, that's don't care. Don't handy. That should be the difference. The fact that he don't care, the voters should look at that metric as like, all right, we can see in your performances. That you don't that, care. That you and don't not to really say they don't care, obviously. No, I mean, he don't care like that. But you, you should be... You don't care about the awards. Cool. That's not that we don't give a fuck either. What I'm saying is your team won a championship last year. You dominated in the playoffs. Boston has dominated the regular season and you're playing the same as you did last year. OKC technically is dominating. Yep, the West. They're dominating the West for that age group. This is not even a fucking discussion. You these are there's College teams older than this team, and they're dominating pros. And if if Cat don't get hurt, Minnesota's number two. Damn near, yeah. And Denver moves Denver's to three. three. Yeah. And we looking at a whole different yeah. dynamic. Well, if Cat don't get hurt, Minnesota might be number one. Number one. one. Yeah. That but as I said, so like for a team that's supposed to be the favorites, you guys are the favorites, but you have not dominated the game this year. Yep. Right, you can guys can go on and win. When the Bulls was dominated, they dominated from the beginning. People were afraid of them. People are afraid of Denver, but not really. They are because ah, we don't want to match up with these motherfuckers, right? Because they know who you guys are when you play hard. And I'll say this: if MB was playing the way that he was playing before the injury, and he didn't get hurt. I think Philly would be giving Boston a run for that number one spot with the mm. consistent play. And I think that the Bucks haven't stepped up to the plate in the East to give Boston a run for their money at all. Yeah. So to seeing that Boston is over there by themselves just dominating like that, and we look at the West and we say, all right, OKC, Minnesota with a cat, healthy cat. You're looking at Denver at third. Like the same, I think the same dynamic happens in the East, right? If you got a healthy fucking Embiid, you're looking at a whole different East. It's nah, like they wasn't. They, they, they wasn't dominating when he was. They up. was. No, they wasn't. He was dominating. Who? The Philly. No, Didn't he. Did they have the easy schedule though at the beginning? Yeah, the he, beginning. Was That's why I said, yeah he was dominating. He was. They looked good. They were playing well. They looked like they could be a force. Yeah. Until he got hurt, and once that happened, they they, they dwindled. But then I, I felt like MB just looked like a force. I think their team was. And then I Maxi was wasn't Maxi I wasn't stepping up. Maxi stepped up now, but I'm thinking like well, he stepped up. I mean, he was he was balling. He was balling. He was 27 losing. a game. He was like 27. And a game. I just I just I just thought that you know when you when you're talking about great teams and you're talking about MVP, there should be some type of dominance, and that's what you did for the past, right? Those guys had to be dominant. This is a champion. They won. 
right? They dominated and then they came back during the season. They're just one of three teams. There's no, they're not standing above, yeah. right? Um, every team that, that came back as a champion and that person was MVP, his team was way above everybody yeah, else. They got That's all I'm saying. And we talk about prioritizing value and winning. It's hard not to look at what the Thunder, nobody expected them. Yeah, to that's what I'm saying. You, you wasn't a top 10. You wasn't a top eight pick going into the playoffs. No. You so, know what I mean? So the fact that you are one or two and you're fighting for that, that, that really shows you how dominant this player is. And I got to give the Mavs a little bit of credit for coming back from a potential 10th, not thinking about them being in the play in yeah. playoffs. A couple, a couple weeks ago, it was a different conversation. Now then, they're the then we, we had them missing. I, I yeah, think we, we did a them. thing about them missing. We, I mean, we, we talked about... We the, weren't thinking about them moving yeah. up. No, we, we had had them. I, know, I know I think I chose that there'd be a team that missed the playoffs. And now they what? They six? They're fifth seed right yeah. now. Yeah. 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 There, may, there may be uh, a reason behind that. So Mavs and Rockets were both locked in in March. Some have argued that Texas banning Pornhub May have something to do with it. Both teams are a combined 14 and 1 since the state of Texas outlawed the adult video site on March 14th. Mm. The Rockets' only loss coming to the Mavs Sunday. I didn't know that was a thing. Mm. I, don't, I heard Sorry, the young kids. The young kids do it. Yeah, I'm a You just gotta go to Red Tube. <laughs> To what? Transition. To what? Got the transition. Stay one step ahead. Transition. Red tube. No, nothing about the, these Red places. Red tube? Mm -hmm. Don't, don't. I'm, I'm not. Y'all know I'm not. I, I prefer Bible.com. You to repeat it for the mm -hmm. listeners. Oh, you want to do? You want the motherfuckers to go look it up? Yeah, go look it up. <laughs> go check it out. Bible.com for all your all your needs, all your internet. Yeah, resources. yeah. <laughs> We back. We back. <laughs> he has risen. We back. Go to, go to churchbible.com, people. <laughs> is, that a, is that a site? Church Bible? <laughs> Church Bible. Just by, Hold on. No, by, holy, on. Church Bible? <laughs> Holymoly.com. <laughs> Let's just put two words together and try to figure out if that's a website. Church Bible. I'm, I'm on church. No, Church Bible. Somebody has a, a site parked there but does not have a... Oh, you checked this? <laughs> I'm on it right now. Church Bible. Churchbible.com. <laughs> Get your Holy Spirit in, people. <laughs> and then on Bible.com, you can get a, a free Bible for your phone or tablet. That's a long ass oh. book. A lot of words. A lot of words. Cliff note. A lot me. of good words. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, now let's move on to Mostly Fans. Another productive day in Gills Arena. Appreciate you to Underdog Fanny's to see, as always. Fanny Laurent. Appreciate you to Underdog Fantasy, as always. Download that. Use promo code Gill. They will match your first deposit up to $100. $100. And we will be at the Final Four this weekend, allegedly. 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 Get these tickets right. Mm hmm. Ticket plugs. Been acting I can't up. All of our teams lost. That's I can. Everyone on this couch. Come on. Home. All right. Mm -hmm. There was a lot, a lot of talk last week. Damn. Yep. Sounded great. Sounded great. It did. Bear down. Mm. It was unfortunate. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> we was in the building. We seen it. No, I know. I know you guys were there. No. That's what happens when you don't invite the entire crew. Right. Okay. You was invited? No. No. Gil said he had a suite yeah, for himself. <laughs> no. like, there, like there's not 18 seats in there. That's why y'all Plus lost. bar, uh, nope. bar stools. That's why you lost. I'm sorry. Got all the good snacks. Only enough seats for three. Kool-Aid flavored wings. <laughs> That's <laughs> Boston. Kool-Aid you know, flavored wings. Get, get a suite just for yourself. <sighs> and watch your team L. take it out. So first question from underdog user Free Game wants to know, what's the most money you spent on a bad meal? On a bad meal? Most money you spent on a bad meal. Mm. I haven't had very many bad meals. I'm very good at picking good places to eat. I pride myself on that, actually. Mm. So I don't know. Applebee's. Not Applebee's. The cheesecake. A bad meal? The factory of cheesecakes. Oh, maybe Boa? Went to Boa. Oh, you ain't fuck with Boa? Not because it was the Wagyu. They had to order the Wagyu steak. That's mm -hmm. this big. Yeah, and it was like, like it was like the real Wagyu. Mm -hmm. Like it was just a fat. Oh shit! It wasn't like, like really? I didn't know. I thought like it was you like. You got like the whole all of them to try. I thought it was meat. Is there like little? Yeah, they are. Not the hell. Like I was doing with the real steak, but I thought it was like more meaty than fat. Like, there's something I tasted where it was more actually meaty than fatty. This was just like... Got the fatty part. It was just like all fat. Mm -hmm. Just like... 
Is this me? Is this tofu, nigga? This? That'll be three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you don't take this shit I back. I see that. Because I've yeah, been so to Bo and had that, and it can go either way. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't like. I don't like that. That 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 Richie rich people mush problem. Taste. Hit the Melting sizzler, Gil. Yeah, I don't like that mouth. Hit steak. the sizzler, they'll never betray you. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. I need a skirt, skirt. I need that skirt steak. <laughs> <laughs> steak it with the New York tie. So, most money you spent on a bad meal? Mm, I can't say, man. Was there an Applebee skillet that wasn't hitting? Oh, man. Probably wasted some money on some bad work, probably. I knew you was going to say that. I'm just thinking. I'm trying to think of the food. I'm like, nah. It's just... uh, what's okay. What's the most money you wasted on a good meal? <laughs> what's the most money you spent? You spent a bunch of money <laughs> on the work. It. And then the good work was bad. The bad work. What's the most money you wasted on a good meal with bad work? Work was bad. When to go eat. It was just a bad meal. It was a bad meal. Good meal on bad work. What's the most you... Sheesh. Oh, Man, it's, you spent some money on some bad work now. Five hundred, six fifty. Mm. Mm. That's kind of mm. hot. It be taxing now. To go box or no? Man, no, nothing. No, no trinkets of the the meal to remember. Some bad box or some bad work. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, let's got got to do a screening process. Nah, Get dude. on Ryan. Yeah, man. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying. Ryan, if you're watching this lever shot, please let me okay. in and let me in. You it have anybody it. that? Uh, I don't got no referrals. I'm, about to refer- I'm trying to get on. Where? To Ryan. The app. The it's dating like an app. Ryan. Dating app. It's only for oh. athletes and niggas with money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I done upgraded. Got Niggaswithmoney.com. What are you going on that? You know you got Instagram, right? It ain't working like it's supposed to be. Oh. Algorithm. They don't be answering Checks back. Be they put you in no the more. yeah. They put you in the request. Got one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they put you in the request side. Oh, oh. The blue checks don't mean shit. Just no say more. I'm paying two fifty. Trust me. <laughs> they they gotta see it. They don't put even it in the bio. Yeah, put, it, put it put in your bio. You know how they put the <laughs> cash apps in the bio. <laughs> like I pay cash apps. I pay rent. What? Yeah, they going Oh, I'm not trying to fall for that. You got no. It's, it's game. That's game. Hey, you say you need your work. They all need rent at some point. That's game. Because right? most of the, most of the, most of, what? Is that game? Paying people's rent. Right, what is it? Gettothepoint.com. Gettothepoint.com. <laughs> Payyourrent.com. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. That's, That's game, girl. That's a different level. That's game right there. Yeah, Every day is an experience. All right, our next question is a video question <laughs> from underdog user Purple Hippo 99 Damn. Hey, what's up, Gil's Arena? Three things, man. The ocean, the earth, and the universe. Which one y'all choosing to know all the secrets of? Would you rather know the secrets of the ocean, the earth, or the universe? This is an aptitude test as well to see now how in tune you are. All the secrets? Like, you get all the secrets. The secrets down there? Don't want to know uh, what's going on in the ocean. see the Titanic. The ocean. the ocean is terrifying. The earth. Definitely the universe. Got to see if people, there's other people living out there, other things like aliens and. Well, I'm pit. picking. If you know, you know. There ain't no universe. The Earth is flat. Oh, I, <laughs> I knew that was coming too. Stop the cap. <laughs> the Earth is flat, for sure. It's flat. And why do you think it's flat? Because this is thing called the plane, right? You know what a plane is, right? Mm-hmm. And you drop the T off a plane or you add the T, it's called what? Planet? All right, bleed the T out and you just got planes, right? It's just flat. You get different planes. There ain't no fucking skies and stars and all that other shit. It's just a plane. That's how they won't let you on Raya. Yeah. Stars, moons, yeah. quasars. I go with the water. I go with, I want to know the secrets of the, of the water. Why? Water. Why? Hmm? Why? This phenomenon. Because King Kong down there. Phen- Phenomenons like squirting and all the different kinds of shit. <laughs> I wanna know how it works. I wanna know land. I wanna know what's buried under this, mm-hmm. around it. Water. I wanna know what's inside the mountains. Water. Is it gold? Is it diamonds? I wanna know it all. <laughs> Water. Yeah. Kool-Aid. I- I'm 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 weird. I wanna know, like when I be looking at mountains, I'm like, who's living in those? Is there humans Hills in have there? Eyes. Do people got nice movie? habitats? Have you seen that movie, Hills Have Eyes? No. no. It's scary. I can't do scary. Oh, well, it's people living in 
Mountains. Mountains. Like, I just want, oh, like, the deep, if they can just x ray, like, are there machines that can x ray inside the, the mountains? There are people that do underground. Look, like, I know underground. I'm just talking about in them, them big hoop hoop mountains. I'll be like, what's in those? You know what's, what's in there? You know what's in there. Like, the animals. I know animals gotta, like, I be wanting to just, just okay. King Kong animals be traveling and. <laughs> King Kong and them in there. Yeah. 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 I, be, I be really thinking about that. Yeah, like. What's in King Kong, mouths? Godzilla, Titan, yeah. Star Wars, you, you think they making these movies telling us what is going on? Now? Did you? They just uh, the the new King Kong just came out. I, I, I can't. Watch I, I, I can't saw it yesterday. Up. Yeah. Can't it's keep crazy. up. I'm, I'm trying to figure out, but it's racist somehow. Big ass gorillas living in the center of the earth. In the center of the earth. I'm just trying it to get something to go. In the center, in the center of the earth, and there's portals and shit. That's called planes. Okay. You see, they didn't go out of space to show you that shit, right? It ain't another planet. If we here, it's different levels to this shit. <laughs> Go to the third plane. I'm not going in the water. There's Open that third eye. There. There's too much yeah, down there. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want no parts. Yeah, yeah, I don't want no, want no parts in the water. Aquaman and them down there. <laughs> I be really, hey, listen. The fact that they said, how, how, what's the percentage of they seen they got in the water? 5%? Something like that? Of what? 10% of the water? That they've, they've, they've just, they've... They've only just... You can't even this, go deep enough because you'll, like... We don't got no machines that's big enough die. down there? Yeah. We have one. Oh, that's some niggas down there. there. Oh, Aquaman no, all. Oh, they gotta be. We cannot be Listen, that gotta, deep underwater. Y'all ain't Cat. watched Cari uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that oh, the world world world. that's why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get because, too far. You, 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 yeah, see, when you get up. close down there, you probably just gotta go upside down and blue, blue. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Nobody's it. tried it yet. I'm telling you. So we've only, only explored. Only Johnny Depp, no. We've only explored 5% of our world oceans. That's crazy. I'm telling you, the abyss. And they the got no triangle. And they have no machines that they haven't even built that can get that far? Ooh. Not with people in it. They tried. You think so? You think? Now we're right. Yeah, they got they do. We they don't they. know about it. That's how they be getting rich. That's how Elon Musk be getting all his money. He got all that pirate gold. Well, you think that? Damn it! Well, you think that submarine went? <laughs> that submarine that just disappeared. <laughs> they said all these people died. For Them room? niggas got out. <laughs> Them niggas got out and went to the mall. All that, all that, all that treasure, treasure down there. All that treasure. Yeah. Treasure. Atlantis, <laughs> Atlantis, and them was down there. All right, let's flip that motherfucker up. Move on to our last I'm gonna question. Get down, I'm going to get down there. As soon as I'm going to go down to, like, 10 feet, and I'm going to go upside down, see if it opens up another portal at the yeah. bottom of the pool. 10 it feet is. is not far enough. Big-ass gorilla. In your world. 10 feet is You never know until you try. The Ten little mermaid is, is real. Ariel and them. <laughs> I'm telling you, Ariel, fine. The fish She's and them talking down there. Yeah, little Nemo and them, they talk. <laughs> <laughs> and them. Nemo and them. I'm pouring that and them to everybody. Them pirate, them pirate, them emperor gold, they, they somewhere, y'all. They down there. Don't you go fucking uh, around. Uh, Great movies. They got hoods, too. They be like, what you doing around here, nigga? Remember this earth? <laughs> hey, this earth was built way before us, right? Before us. And some of this shit that they, we don't know how it was built, somebody did back then. For sure. It has to be aliens. Mm -hmm. All right, our third question, video question for mostly fan user Zadarian. You know, Gilzer, a quick question. Uh, since the playoffs are on the horizon, I just want to ask, what did you guys do to prepare to get ready for playoff season, whether it was uh, getting more rest, taking more reps, less reps? Uh, what did you guys do to get more and ready for playoff shape? Hey, producer just wants you guys to know, uh, if you want your question featured on the show, have the show on in the background when you ask a question. <laughs> yeah. that, that generally helps Love bump that. you up to the top because we know you're a real supporter. So what did you guys do to prepare for the playoffs? Them. And they did. I ain't never been. Did, never made? Leave me out of this. <laughs> um, would it have been the same as college? Your, your college pregame? No, no, okay. All right. <laughs> Different of work, <laughs> preparation. For the most part, it's it's preparing your body. More, it's not like it's not in shape. You're already in shape, right? The game actually slows down to get more physical. So from there, it's you know you're gonna do a lot more stretching. Uh, you're gonna get massages, ice cold tub, you know, cold tub, right? Steam room. Um, you might change how you eat, right? You're not gonna eat a lot of you know sugar. Not gonna drink much. You know, when you're getting ready to get ready for the playoffs, not partying as much, right? Because, um, you know, it, it, it all depends. I remember we was in Ohio. We didn't want to stay in Ohio, in Ohio, so we'll stay in D.C. longer, right? So it's like two games there, two games back. But let's say we play on like a Tuesday, Friday, 
right? After the Tuesday game, we might go back home because back home we, we have our, our facility to ourselves. Yep. So we have to coordinate with like Cavs and they might pull any kind of schedule on you. So you might not be able to get in there like you want to. So you'll go back home. Okay. So we're there Wednesday and Thursday, leave Thursday after so we can get our treatment, we can get our, we can get our shooting up, we can get to our, our facility. So it's all, it's all part of a strategy too. Yeah. Alexi, what do you I do to mean, prepare for the playoffs? The one season I made the playoffs when I was actually playing, we were still in single elimination. Ooh. So we lost, we ended up losing in Seattle. So like there wasn't really much prep for that, for the, the one game, because we weren't in the series yet. When I was in Chicago, um, I wasn't really playing at all. So for me, my preparation, and from what I saw, yeah, I agree with Gil, like from what I saw from the players who were logging heavy minutes, like lots of rest, treatment, you know, they wasn't going out doing anything extra. But as far as like the bench players, like we had to like, I was watching a ton of film, you know, mm -hmm. I was trying to help the starting group stay locked in. We didn't have practice players because we were still dealing with COVID stuff. So we just had to be locked in and practice, you know, helping them prepare with the scouting and stuff like that. So I think mentally, obviously physically, you got to take care of your body, but you really got to lock in mentally, figure mm -hmm. out what's working, what's not working, um, because then it becomes a game of, of chess mm -hmm. in the playoffs in the series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's like when it, when it comes to like the basketball part of it, it's you doing a lot of overthinking, right? Um, like let's say I scored 40. Now my going into the next game is how would I stop myself? Right? How would I stop myself? Like what are they gonna throw at me? Because I know they're gonna try to do that. So mm -hmm. because I know they're gonna do this at me, I gotta have a plan and do this. Yeah. Right? So it's it's a lot of, you know, playing chess, you know, trying to think you know, what they're going to do, what you need to do. If you do this, what they're going to do. So it's, it's, it's a chess game out there, and you're moving in real time. First quarter don't look like the second quarter. Second quarter don't look like the fourth quarter. Right. What, you did in the what you did in the first half probably won't work in the, in, in the second half because, you know, in that, in that, at that halftime, they done changed some whole shit up, and they went to an alternate playbook that you <laughs> probably ain't seen. They probably did a play in yes. November yep. that they done pulled out their November playbook yep. for you in the playoffs, and you... You sitting there sitting on their April playbook, like, oh, April, May, this is what they're doing, and they done changed all that shit up. Well, how much did you guys do that type of stuff, like work on stuff super early in the season that you know you were going to bank yeah. for we, the playoffs? We, we, did, we, did we did a lot of changing of, like, some of our, our, our sets. Like, if we ran a lot of, in April, we did a lot of chins early, mm -hmm. right? And we got in with the chins. We might start off the first game with a lot of uh, forwards out. Okay. We might throw the forwards out, work the, uh, like, Karan and Antoine in, and see then if, they're like... To see if it's working. To see if it's working, to see if they're going to they're gonna key in on that, to go back to the chins, and then we might not do the chin plays we did against them that time. We might do something else. Okay. Right? You remember, like, Steve, uh, Ant-Man and Steve, um, Steve Curry was having a little talk. It wasn't a talk, but they said something. That, like, Ant-Man said, yeah, we knew they were going to do this play, and it was just, the, the, and they end up running it. We said, watch out for this play. They might do this play, and they end up doing it. And Steve Kerr was like, shit, we ain't ran that play since November. Wow. Preparation is key. No. But that's, that's the shit in the playoffs. Like, you, they might throw a play that you ain't seen since. So it's really about scouting and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out what they'll throw at you. So it's more about the, the mentality. That's probably my biggest regret is not being able to be in a playoff setting because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a very detailed player. So I love film. I love um, when we're actually going through scout in practice. I always would get on the coaches, and they used to hate me for this because I always was like, all right, are we going to run it and guard it like this? Let's guard all the scenarios. Let's black it, let's red it, let's white it, let's switch it, let's turn it down, let's see it, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of coaches don't like to go through all mm -hmm. of those mm -hmm. scenarios mm -hmm especially when it's regular season, because it's like, oh, we might not, they might not even go through those, those uh, um, processes. So it's like, I can only imagine in playoffs when you have to be detailed. That's exact, but that, see, that's where you would have excelled at in the yeah. playoffs, because it's, it's, it's detailed. I love like, it. What if yeah, they I do this? It. What if they do yeah, that? Yeah, I love it. And even as a scout team, like if I'm a role player on the scout team, I'm taking the challenge to make sure that our team is prepared. Like, look, bro, they might not even run the play. Let's go back to, like you said, November mm -hmm. and see how Washington was running the chin action. They ain't been running it for two and a half months. Mm -hmm. But game one, they ran it. 
and they killed us on it because mm -hmm. we ain't prepared for mm -hmm. it. Coach, what are we doing? Like, let's prepare for all of their plays. What are the best things that they was doing in the beginning of the season? Now let's look at this. Let's look at this. And um, even in college, that's how I was. Um, and Coach Williams didn't like me challenging certain things when it came to our offense. Like, let's go all the way through the, the process of our offense. Like, let's execute the whole thing all the way down to the last option. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you don't do that, you are only setting yourself up for failure because you're relying on the first two options. Yeah. Oh, we don't got the pick and roll here, and then we kick it back, and he don't got it then. It was freelance. We still got four <laughs> other options. Yeah, free let's, let's, let's make them play defense the whole way through. And uh, I think that that was the biggest regret. It's, it's wanting to play playoff ball because I was always used to getting to that level of the last step, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And um, I hear Gilbert talk about it all the time because I've seen in real time y'all playing against Cleveland and mm -hmm. certain teams and not being able to get over the hump. And it's like you have certain guys that's not locked in to play off no. basketball. Where it's like, this detail, bro, like, let's go all the way Little through. Things, and you to even have that guy call you, uh, who you said, uh, Scotty. Scotty, yeah. Scotty call you and be like, nah, nah you got to decoy this. To have someone like Karan or somebody else on the team, like, nah, yeah, it's time for me to step up because they're not expecting me to step up. They're expecting yeah. you to, let's switch it up. You know what I'm saying? That's just, to me, high IQ basketball. And I love that shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, another exhilarating day. <laughs> Inside the arena. Happy April Fools to everybody who celebrates. No pranks in the show, girl. I'm very, very proud of you. Susan. I'm not gonna be I'm surprised y'all didn't try to prank me. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. Like, wait a minute, god damn it. <laughs> Easter was yesterday. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I told you it was them. Yeah, yeah. See they said we. You see they said we. You see they said we. I told you it was them. You said we. It was Steven them got you, man. You said we. Yep. <laughs> We had, to, we had to spend a lot of money to get those cake stains out of the carpet. It was not in the budget. Uh, we oh, had to, to let some people go as a result funny. of it. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Melly, Melly. That was funny. Uh -huh. I wish I was there. I wish I was there for that. Melly, Melly, okay, I ain't got him. <laughs> but this has been another episode of Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa. Ooh. We will see y'all tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>